Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast. And now here's the guy who puts the ass in Survivor. It's Rob <laughs> Sestranino. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our Survivor Feedback Show. And we have such a good one for you here today. A tradition unlike no other as we are joined here by one of my great friends from the Survivor community here on the Survivor Feedback Show, back again for another season in a row. Please welcome back, Hannah Lil Nesson. Hannah, how are you? I'm great. I'm also coming live from my apartment. As a heads up, I live in LA and I have DJs as my downstairs neighbors. So if you hear an unst unst, trust me, I tried to stop them from doing that. They will not stop. The music, the party Can't keeps stop, going. Won't stop. Yeah. Can't stop, won't stop. So if you hear some unst uns, that's what's happening. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, Hannah, so excited yes. to have you back here for another season Thrilled. of Talking Survivor with me. I think, I mean, let's see. Is this <laughs> now that you started in Survivor Game Changers 10 seasons later? I mean, this is like uh, the, I mean, the longest active streak, I got to think, in the history I, of the podcast. It's my favorite part of Survivor. I've said it for 10 seasons in a row, and I'll say it again. I love RHAP. I love Raw Happers. Uh, congrats. Yeah. Happy anniversary for you. 25% of the run of the series now. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay. How? Yeah, I'm good. I sorry. I, I I have all these technology. A text popped up on my screen, and I had to like. And you answered the text. The text asked, "How are you?" The yeah. I'm just gonna spend the next 15 to 20 minutes texting. Here, I'll quit out of my iMessage. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's great. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Well, a smooth we're so beginning. <laughs> so happy that you're here, and we have a lot to talk about here on a very fun season, Survivor 44, a season that there is, uh, you know, a lot of fun stuff going on, and we'll get into all of it. Uh, but first, I think everybody wants to know how you're doing, myself included. I'm doing great, and I'm doing great because of you and our. Oh, <laughs> I'd love to hear it. Yes. Yeah, we the last time we podcasted. I lamented for about 30 minutes of the podcast about wanting to see Taylor Swift yep. and not getting to see Taylor Swift. I had missed out on tickets and 30 minutes of a survivor podcast was, you know, committed to this Taylor Swift. And after that podcast, I had her happers reaching out to me with tickets and I ended up going to opening night of Taylor Swift. And so wow. I, I just would like to start this podcast with some gratitude. Keelan, Ben, Kenzie, and Michael took me to Four opening people. night in Arizona. Four people. Um, it was awesome. We here, were hold on. Sam Moore has a visual here. Uh, oh, you we've brought, got a you visual. Brought a, you brought a, a, a clip with us. Okay. Uh, oh all right. Let's see. What, what are we looking at here? Yeah, what you're looking at here is uh, my 14 year old self sort of taking over my excitement level. Uh, yes. th there I am in <laughs> row 29 on the floor of the opening night of the Taylor Swift Eras Tour. Uh, if you click the little arrow arrow to the next photo, that was my group. Mm -hmm. uh, we we had a wonderful time. We had brunch. We talked Survivor. We had a little. Um, pre-concert pre-game in a in a lovely hotel in, Ari in glendale arizona yes um they were so welcoming uh so lovely uh all just really excited both survivor and swifties and uh yeah you can keep keep if you click through you'll get to taylor uh there, there she is that's wow. taylor swift uh that was my that was my view it was um it was really special and it's all because of RHAP. Yeah, well that's so nice to hear and you know I said the other night of you know Rob's podcast this community is uh you know changes people's lives and um so happy that uh, people uh, helped get you to go see Taylor Swift. I I felt like I won a concert uh, like I, oh I did win a concert but a contest you, you like did it win just a felt yeah I won a concert contest. Um, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. it made me so happy. I it was 44 songs in three hours. If you're not familiar, oh, Survivor 44. It was yeah, it was Survivor 44, 44 songs by Taylor Swift. She, uh, for those who don't know Taylor Swift, that's she, a hell of a show. It's a hell of a show. Yeah. Uh, she really understood that people, you know, begged on podcasts to be to be at her concert, and yeah. she really delivered with mm-hmm. uh, quite the show. And Paramore opened up, um, okay, as did Gail. Uh, but Paramore, you know, is my age group, so it was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, a lot of the a lot of the Swifties are my age. The only kids there were really kind of the young kids of millennial Swift Swifties. <laughs> um, but it was uh, it was the best. And yeah. this for, for those and does Taylor in mind the if babies talk, cry during the pod, during the concert. Did did babies cry? Yes. No. When when millennials bring their babies to oh, concerts. No, there were they were these giant ear plug earphones. So there okay. were no crying babies, just really sweet uh, children of the millennial Taylor Swift fans. OK. Well, I'm so glad. And maybe you make another wish today. Yes, I'll have to think. It'll have to be also like two hours into the podcast. Okay, stay tuned. This is one of the few ones I've done with you that's fully live as well. It's real fun. Really? Really, You you know, we're we're like walking on a tightrope. Yeah. And I love the comments. We can see them. I know I focused too much in the past on them, but yes, we did accidentally coordinate our outfits today for those watching the videos. We're yes. We're we're the same tribe. The a sign that we are simpatico that we're headed into, uh, you know, being on the same wavelength. I I hope so. I've prepared thoroughly for this. Like always I've binged the season in a week. I have, for those watching on the video, a whiteboard of the vote breakdown and a lot of different uh, notes on this giant whiteboard. Yeah. I really, I took this seriously. Okay. Now, did you keep with your tradition of that you don't watch the the season at all and then come up to like a week before the podcast, then you watch the whole thing? Correct. Yes. I did that again. Okay. And do you feel like that that is the ideal way that people should be watching Survivor? Probably not. I think mm-hmm. it's a lot of Survivor in one week. Yeah. It will affect your dreams and your thoughts when you watch that much Survivor at once. But I do think it also gives you a bird's eye view of what story is being told. And I think that ultimately Survivor is all about storytelling. And I'm not talking edgic or any like sort of calculated Get stuff out of like here that. With that edgic. Come on. No, I'm not. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm Jeff talking says it doesn't even exist. Come on. I mean, it definitely exists, but I, <laughs> I'm talk. I'm not even talking about edgic. I'm talking about just storytelling and like whose story is being told. And when you watch it from start to finish, I think you have a bit of a clearer view of yes. what story is being. Whose told. story is being told, Hannah? Right now, it feels like the Tika story. Yeah, it feels like we're 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 hearing Tika stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and that it's the tale of a ragtag bunch of purple wearing um what are they called? but Stooges. not purple in the edit if you know what i mean not purple in the edit no <laughs> no but purple in the clothing mm-hmm. <laughs> and it feels like that's the, the story yeah that we're hearing okay yeah i think that we got that i yeah. think that comes through even if you're watching the show week to week yeah i mean i think that there are definitely other big players involved but it that mm-hmm. definitely they feel like the protagonist to me um mm-hmm. so i don't i don't um we'll see if they turn out to be the protagonist in the end yeah i think you, you wrote in the chat if you, you want to know if you're slowed down or you're delayed no you're not right you're not right. okay so I, I don't know whatever's <laughs> giving you that impression but you are coming through perfectly clear and perfect. in in perfect sync <laughs> perfect Okay. Um, yeah, no, I, I enjoy, uh, I enjoy my binge, my movie, my season 44 movie. Yes. It's really, it's clear when you watch it all at once. I'm sure it is week to week too, but I know we all talk about like how many advantages and stuff there are, but if this were a movie, it's like they've written so many like car chases in like one series of scenes. Like there's just Mm -hmm. so much. I, I watched it with my boyfriend, Matt, 
and this was his first Survivor season. Not Franny's Matt. Yeah, different nerdy Matt. Okay. Who Boy, plays that D&D. would be what a twist that would be if we what found out after the season was over <laughs> that this was who your boyfriend was. That I am. Let's start the rumor on this podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we. You know, this was his first Survivor season. Yes, and. What a way to start. Um, I liked some of the twists. I felt like there were too many of others. Yes. I actually liked the birdcage. Here's a hot, uh, maybe a controversial thing. I enjoyed the birdcage. I could do without the journeys. That's how yeah. I felt watching it at yeah. once. I don't think that people necessarily disliked the birdcage. Um, I think that people felt like that the fake idol aspect of it was maybe like one step too far. But I think that the actual concept of the birdcage originally was fine uh and i think that most people agree they don't really like the journeys uh not the band and not the movie um but the survivor twist respectively but you said you watched this uh with your boyfriend this was his first survivor season Correct. as somebody who is a newbie to survivor uh-huh. now was he able to because it's like two schools of thought um that I think a lot of people feel like oh new people will never be able to fi- figure out what's going on but I kind of feel like that newer viewers are sort of just there for the vibes and they're not really trying to understand what's going on so much and they enjoy it. Um, so is the question, did he enjoy it and was there for the vibes or was he very confused? Yes. Great. Um, I would like to put into context about how he understood survivor. And then maybe two hours in, we can like bring him in to clarify, but okay. my boyfriend and I met playing virtual werewolf during the pandemic okay so that's a game where they're it's like sort of like mafia there are werewolves and villagers and it started out very simple is it anything like dungeons and dragons he also plays DD, but it's a little okay but when we started this game of virtual werewolf there were werewolves and villagers and then slowly we kept playing because everyone had nothing to do and it, these nights went so like hours a night of this game. And so p- people started creating their own roles, the telepath, like the, just the, like all these like weird new roles, some in the original game and some not. So, but by like, towards the end of us all playing werewolf, it was a completely different convoluted over too many idols in the werewolf game basically Mm -hmm. and so before we started season 44 i explained to him i said you know this is kind of similar this is the show that i love but it's like the end of the um werewolf journey of the show and so with that context i think he understood what was happening he was like oh i get it i get that this is like now there's like a all seeing wolf that can also morph into this. Like I kind of understand how this has evolved and I mostly think he got it, but there was a funny moment when Josh showed um, uh, Jam Jam, his fake idol and Jam Jam went, are those the beads from tree mail? And Mm -hmm. Matt, my boyfriend went, "Um, what is tree mail? He asked me, what is tree mail? And I realized there maybe were some basic things that he might have missed Mm -hmm. um so like you said he just kind of was along for the ride it was like i don't know what tree mail is i'm gonna keep pushing through but But i think for the most part he gets the concept did he enjoy the experience did he say like oh this is good let's let's watch some more survivor um i think he did i've always told him he would like survivor i've always been like maybe let's not watch my season right because i like being able to tell you the stories of it but this has made me want to show him my season he's really into the survival aspects of it which makes me think he would enjoy some real old school survivor um he likes there was one moment where they they talked about the getting the fire started and he was really interested in that and then they cut away to some game talk and he was disappointed um, it was fun to watch with someone. I didn't mean for my whole watch to be from his perspective, but it was mm-hmm. fun to watch with someone who has never seen the show before. Yes. Okay. And well, it was, uh, it's oh. good to get, get that background. Yeah. It was also especially fun to watch a girl in my archetype fall for a guy 
in his archetype, also with his name. We really felt like we got to be a part of the season in okay. the Franny and Matt love story. Okay. All right. So you were, it was like a little of like a art imitating life. Is there Survivor some... art? <laughs> Is Survivor art? Yeah. I think Survivor's okay. art. I mean, have you seen the beautiful shots of, you know, the mm -hmm. underwater? Yeah. There's some real artistic moments. I think Survivor's art. I've, Do you think I Survivor's can... art? I, it probably is. I think that in the definition of art, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, watching Franny and Matt, sometimes they would say things that my Matt and I have said to each other. And I also just, I know there's a lot of different things. Do characters. you all eat Ethiopian food? We've never eaten Ethiopian food, but oh, we maybe. have gone on a road trip. And that was one of their first things that they okay. platonically planned together. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of characters and things to like about this season, but I think the Freddie Matt storyline, a nerd showmance, really, okay. really got me. All right. Well, I know you have a whiteboard, and so I feel like that I would, you know, be remiss to not ask you about the. Have you broken down the game? Like, what what's on your whiteboard? Um, sure. Let's see if I can. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Um. I can tell that this is harder to see oh, okay. <laughs> on my camera now. Um, so I ran out of the purple marker did run out of ink. So Tika is blue, but mm -hmm. I wrote down everyone's name uh, by tribe and okay. then who they voted for to try to figure out this double split vote, one fake, one real. And then what advantage they so this have. This is all about this week. This was about this week in prep, sort of, because I wrote down if they had the advantage, if they used it. This is mostly this week. And then I broke them into D&D &D classes oh. um, in honor of Kane's departure. In honor of um, Kane, yeah. But I'm newer to D&D, &D, and so I was told that this might be controversial to some... <laughs> to some viewers uh, who love D&D. &D. But I did break them into class, like Fran, he's a paladin that a warrior that's also protecting someone. Um, what are some of the ones I'm proud of? I felt like Jem Jam was a bard, uh, very musical and kind of uh, magical. Um, is uh, magical. Carolyn is the rogue. Yeah, so I broke it down into D&D &D class. Um, some general notes too. I wrote that uh, Carson stopped throwing up. That felt important to put on mm -hmm. the whiteboard. Yeah. Um, Jam Jam sort of has an Arya Stark kind of list of who he wants to go home uh, mm -hmm. what else oh i drew matt um over here okay because every you... time they go to tribal he gives franny hard eyes that's, yeah, so that's matt blankenship not your matt that's yes that is franny's matt okay not my matt um, yes you know i put um you know little little coded codes based on my uh if i think they might win um okay. the, the dragon reference was actually danny surprisingly and not kane you know just just mm -hmm. the basic um oh yeah we had the first mention of a real dragon and it wasn't even it from wasn't kane freaking kane yeah um so this is the general uh all right well let me ask you a little bit about now. kane because now you are a dungeons and dragons expert do you think that kane unprompted talks nonstop about Dungeons and Dragons, or do you think for whatever reason, the producers in every single interview session they had with Kane, they asked him questions of, Hey, how is this like Dungeons and Dragons right now? So before I met my Matt, I would have said, this is producers pushing it. Of course it is. You know, they're asking him, but dating a guy who plays D and D I can say confidently D and D people think about D and D a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of time is spent, you know, creating worlds. They might GM or, um, you know, looking up uh, different classes and creating characters. Truly D and D people really think about D and D. So I'm going to go with, I think Kane thinks about D and D a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that pretty confidently. Did you feel like all of his D&D &D analogies hit for you? Mm, 
the ones I remember are like him saying he said that in D and D there are clear bad guys to fight. That makes sense. And then in Survivor there are not. I'm just shocked that Danny had the got. I I wonder if Kane is both mad he got voted out and mad that his boot episode had the word dragon in it, but it was Danny that used the name. Mm-hmm. Do you think mm-hmm. his D&D works in terms of Survivor? I thought it was a little overkill. Like, I am not a D&D expert, but I felt like that we kind of got it from, you know, like, you know, four episodes ago. I mean, it's a passionate group of people. They're Rob. passionate. That They're is true. Passionate. That's very true. Yeah. Um, okay. As someone who's only done one real campaign, I played a bard named Bartholomew. Mm-hmm. Um, Bartholomew? Bartholomew the Bard. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. I was in the House of Whispers. This is only going to make sense to a very specific group of people. And I wonder mm-hmm. if they're listening. But I'm newer to D&D. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they're happy to have you. I hope so. Would you invite Kane to one of your campaigns in the future? Kane is more than welcome. I'm sure that he is not the only one of this cast who has done D and D. You think this so? Seemed, you think this in is, the new era? You think these are the, the new key yeah. demo? Yeah, the new era. I think is a D and D heavy group. Yes, I think that's a fair assessment. <laughs> Oh, there are some D&Ders in the chat. I can yes. see from Okay, the chat. they're everywhere. Yeah, okay. They're a key demo for this podcast, too. <laughs> Welcome to all Swifties and D&Ders. I hope you are satisfied. Those are the big the two. Start. And there's a Venn diagram, and there's a lot of overlap also. <laughs> I hope Between so. the two of them. Okay, so Hannah, I guess then let's talk about this vote a little bit here this week, where let's ultimately Kane went home and now I feel like that we're set up. We had this very interesting three, three, three tribal council, which yeah. just happened. But now I feel like that Tika, who's been able to move around undetected throughout the entire first 17, 18 days of the game, that like they're exposed now, right? I think that they are exposed if you are looking at it from a bird's eye view. I wonder how, um, you know, meshed Jam Jam, Carolyn and Carson are relationship wise and personality wise. I'm curious if they'll be able to pull off this um, plan in which they then go to uh, Ratu and I I keep wanting to call them Roku, like a Roku Roku machine. Yeah. Um, And if they are. How is Ratu like a Roku? How is Ratu like a Roku? They're a machine. Mm -hmm. Uh, They get things done. Um, (laughs) But I wonder if they'll be able to go to Ratu. They don't really work that great. Um, You know. (laughs) They, but if they are able to go to Ratu and be like, look, Franny, Danny, these are big threats. I wonder if like the new dragon wing that was Ratu with all these advantages will now become sort of the challenge beast of Franny and, you know, Danny played an idol. If they'll be able to sort of still move the spotlight over to them, I think it's possible. They're not hidden anymore. They're not this weak, helpless Tika, but I think, I wonder if socially they'll be able to navigate it. So, Hannah, do you think that the Tika tribe will fulfill the prophecy of Will Wall and be able to deliver ultimately on the perfect pendulum strategy? Oh, Will Wall. I was going to bring up Will Wall, but I wasn't sure how. I wonder if they will. So he's not canceled, is he, Hannah? No, I don't think so. Oh, my God. No, Please. Will Wall's lovely. Please. Yeah, he came up on the B and B this week as for having his uh, j- occupation be pr- a professional high school student. Um, Will's lovely, but they will play this clip of us saying how he's not cancelable if he does one day get canceled. Oh no, no. <laughs> oh no. Um, I I wonder if they'll socially be able to do it. I I I mean they're not hidden anymore, but we do have Carolyn still has an idol. Um, so that could help. Um, yeah, I'm really curious if Carolyn and, uh, Carson will feel threatened by Jam Jam at some point. We've heard a player like Brandon claim that 
you know, Carolyn just listens to Jam Jam. I wonder if that sort of perception might start to irk her. I'm curious if they'll both be able to stick together and be able to hide. Yeah, I do feel like that if you're sort of like watching them from home, it's like, yeah, the move is now this week to be like, hey, Lauren, Jamie, you know who we should get next? Danny, let's go. But I just wonder, like, are the players in Survivor 44 just like our emotions really just left at the door? And, you know, is there any part of like uh, the like, emotion like the humanness of these players left for lauren and for jamie to say actually you know what jam jam carson and carolyn you kind of screwed us two votes in a row we actually don't want to work with you well they know they screwed them one vote but the other vote was a little more hidden because yeah, jam i guess was they, they, they know they got screwed once in a row they know it but but like that they're like soka could like really throw them under the butt like like if Soka wanted to like go back and say, like if Franny wanted to do that plan that she brought up, she could go like, Hey, you know, that jam jam and, and Carson like knew that Danny was going to play the idol. Right. Franny can, tr Franny has the truth on her side, mm -hmm. but, and it's not that I don't think they will be emotional. I just wonder, they have to make a choice to, to side with someone who betrayed them. I know Soka didn't betray them quite as hard because they didn't lie, but they have to make a choice to work with people who voted against their tribe. Yeah. Is it they a betrayal if, if you were never on the same side? I mean, I think it's less of a betrayal. I because mean, Danny promised that he wouldn't vote out someone who <laughs> took the rice. The, I thought he rice. was being sarcastic when he said that. Did you think that that was like he was being sincere? Like I don't, that, probably not. Sincere? Kane didn't yeah. think he was being sincere. So I'll trust Kane's perspective. A lot of people did, though, because what happened, like he said, like, yeah, I won't vote anybody out. And then Carson was like, yeah, I, I won't either. Uh, so it's sort of like he, the, I, I felt like that he was being very facetious. And then Carson just piled on. And that's why he was like, yeah, uh, scouts on her. <laughs> Um, I mean, I don't, if Kane didn't believe him for a second, it must've been clearer out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I just think that it's like uh survivor 44. I don't think anybody really like takes like a pinky swear on the mat as like uh, to be like a serious gesture. I think where Ratu goes, ja which is just Jamie and Lauren will depend on who they think is threatening. Mm -hmm. And even though Franny is 100% right that Tika is much more threatening than they are coming across, they are playing this sort of, we're goofy, but they're not. Even though that's the truth, I don't, I think that they'll go in the direction of which one's more threatening. It's three and three, but Carson did spend time at Ratu. And so I, th I think Franny and Danny potentially might seem more threatening to Jamie and Lauren than Tika, even if Tika is gaining this momentum. I think that is a way that it could happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very interesting to see exactly how it goes. I, I do feel like that they do swing back around and get Danny this week. And then I feel like that Franny could be vulnerable if Danny wins uh, the immunity challenge. I think Franny has been vulnerable for a while. I mm -hmm. think that Franny clearly gets along with people and connects with people, but we haven't really been shown allies that not only she can trust, but that work well with her. You know, we had, I think Danny and Franny are like weirdly a, a weird, but good potential pair and that they, you know, he has muscles. She's won challenges, you know, they kind of protect each other in that way. But, you know, we saw Danny, Danny's perspective of not trusting her about Tika isn't crazy when you're inside of it and you're not sitting at home seeing it, but her, him calling her illogical. It's two different things for me. Mm -hmm. Him disagreeing is he has every right to do out there, even though he's been proven wrong by watching it, but yeah. him calling her illogical. It's just a difficult ally who doesn't trust your perspective. So yeah, he <laughs> said that she was making moves against the family. Uh, which I thought was like by by doing what because by wanting to go to get is is Jam Jam and Carson are in the family now. 
I think Tika has done a good job of making Danny feel like they're on his side. I mean, they let him know that, you know, they were included in the idol thing. Carson is the, you know, Heidi, they, 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 uh, or Carson sort of, they all knew about the idol. They didn't spill the beans. They let him do the thing. I think Danny feels very connected to, to Tika. And Mm -hmm. there's another possibility, which is that, you know, uh, Soka and Tika kind of <laughs> gang up. I had to look at the day. I keep, <laughs> I, I just, I'm not used to Is a to whiteboard the, good for podcast notes? I'm not sure. I think sort of just a few phone notes probably would be easier than me. Yeah, I kind of feel like uh, ideally, like you, you, it's good to have uh, something like in front of you and not like, you know, like I a Flintstones have... like board of like, here's what I had to write down from this episode. <laughs> I think you're a hundred percent right. I wanted to show the people my notes. And yes. so I did it really for the audience instead mm. of putting it in front of me. Yeah. But um, there is a possibility of Soka and Tika staying together since they feel so enmeshed. But I just, I, I don't see players like Jam Jam, Carolyn, Carson, not going for people who are perceived more threatening like Danny and Franny. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to ask you about some things that happened in the episode. Um, and I want to bring the voicemails into this. Let's and do so, it. I missed them. I okay. was so excited. All right. So Why we got so many. We got the hot, the most voicemails it's... that we got for any feedback show of the season. Really? So, uh, How course, many did we... we? Wait, don't give it away. Yeah, can't bring it away. But it was like, uh, let's just say a lot. Okay. A lot. All right. Can I say thank you to the yes. people who voicemailed in? I love yeah, that is allowed. I used to do I used to do the the episode after one. Yeah. But I love the voicemail one and I refuse to go back to a podcast yeah. where I don't hear from the listeners. You feed off of the interactivity with the listeners. As I do really I. I like it. Okay. All right. So let's take a question. This is from Jordan in DC has a question for you. Here's Jordan. Hi Rob. Hi Hannah. This is Jordan from DC. And I had a theory about Franny's vote for Jamie. Uh, Rob, you and Janet had speculated that, oh, maybe Franny was left out. But I don't think that's the case at all. We know from Kane's exit interview that um, he was close with Matt and also Franny. So I think Franny might have just been trying to protect that relationship, hedging against the worst case scenario. So worst case scenario, right? Uh, The Soka plan doesn't go through. Maybe there's an idol. Maybe Tika's not actually with them. Um, and Kane does not go home, um, and one of either Danny or Heidi goes home, and maybe now Franny feels like she needs to protect against being the next vote. Um, and so by voting for Jamie, she's saving this relationship with Kane because she told Kane during the live tribal, I think they're going for Jamie. Um, she can say, oh, no, I, I told you the truth. I thought I was told Jamie. Um, I voted for Jamie. Clearly they're not working with me. I'm not working with them. Let's work together. So she, she's hedging against the scenario where Kane doesn't go home, um, and maybe now she can salvage something of that relationship. Let me okay. know what you guys think. All right. Jordan thinks that Jamie's, uh, sorry, Franny's one vote for Jamie, which we've been trying to figure out all week, came from that, okay, Franny was protecting herself in case that Kane ended up not going home. I got an a Instagram DM from one of our listeners, Amy, and she wrote to me to say, here's why I think Franny voted for Jamie. I think that, since she told Jamie so many times that people were gunning for her in order to flush the idol, she wrote down Jamie's name in order to not lose credibility. She knew Jamie was not going home, but she wanted to make sure that somebody voted for Jamie and it didn't look like that Franny was lying to her. That's my opinion. Other people have speculated that Franny was just left out of the vote and just on her own. Maybe she heard something at the live tribal. Hannah, what do you think? Um, so a couple things. First of all, I originally thought that it was part of a second split vote. I was like, oh, they both split the votes. But then when you look at the breakdown, like you've discussed all week, it's one vote. It's not enough to mm-hmm. be a split vote or else, you know, Heidi would have gone home. Um, I think that uh, Kane's closeness to Franny, um, Franny doesn't seem like the kind of player that would would be afraid to tell Kane if he survived the vote somehow. Hey, you were going through one of you were going for Soka. Um and so we went for you. I think she's she doesn't seem like someone who has to like 
fake a name. Also, you don't, it, it, it is bad for Franny now that she has voted for Jamie because Kane is gone. And that was the bigger chance was that Kane was going to be gone and Jamie was going to be back. And you've now written down someone's name who doesn't seem like a huge threat and might go mm-hmm. for you soon. So that is, this is not in her best interest to have written down Jamie's vote. And so more than likely her closeness to Kane was a, evident and people were probably afraid that that was going to um, affect the security of the vote. And so the idea that she was left out of the vote is not a, re- a reflection on her intelligence or strength. She's still all of those things, but just an evident close relationship. I don't think it's in her best interest to write down someone's name who could easily go for her, especially someone who from watching it at least mm-hmm. is not as threatening and might be able to get this okay. team. So Hannah, does writing down the wrong name help Franny or hurt Franny? And I guess because it help Franny. What do you mean? It, like, well, that's kind of counterintuitive, but if Franny is able to present herself as like in the same way that I've been saying about like Carson and Jam Jam and Carolyn are all like, we have nothing. Uh, we ever, we don't know what's going on. Nobody tells us anything. We're just like uh, the we're just the smallest tribe. You know, could Franny try to spin that as like I didn't even get told to vote. They don't trust me. That would be. She could attempt to spin it like that. I think that it's depends how personally Jamie takes her vote. If Jamie figures out she's the one, I feel like who voted Jamie kind of takes things personally. I just, it's not great to be left out of the vote. We just saw Kane go home and he was, you know, not right about every vote and things like that. And that Clearly, didn't diminish, no. did, it didn't diminish his threat level to get voted out. People still saw him as smart and strategic. Um, so I do think that Franny was potentially left out of a vote. Uh, this happens. Uh, she's also, it just, it also drives home my point about Franny who look, she's got a star next to her name, Yeah, you know, potential winner. I love Franny. She would, if I could, if I could go through the screen and give her an ally, I would jump into my screen, but Mm -hmm. it just, I do think she's in a tricky spot where I know this is called like the game without alliances, but I think we have some pretty strong alliances and people who have people. They who really called it tr- the game without alliances in the promo. Oh, she said I think that it was Jamie, Jamie, was Jamie like, said the era of alliances are, Oh, is it the era of trust clusters now? I, whatever you call these things, there's some form of alliances. And I think, Franny's alliance, you know, of Danny and Heidi from uh, her original tribe, or even, um, you know, Kane said he was close to her, whatever nerves are left, Carson, there, there's not someone who is telling her what's up when she's getting left out. This is sort of like Franny is a star on her own a bit right now from where mm-hmm. I'm sitting. She's going solo. She's a solo. She's a, she's a pop singer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, let me ask you this question then from Mikey who wants to know. Also, thank you from DC. That was great. Yes, okay. Um, Mikey wants to know, does Franny have a path to the end? She's been beasting the comps, but does she have a viable path? And you put a star next to her name, so obviously you think she might. I think that her path is less clear, but like I said, it's about the storytelling And there could be a story in which Franny comes out on top. It would be a story of less alliances and more deflecting um, sort of like threat, like deflecting onto other threats, maneuvering through people, potentially finding something or winning something to get there. I think it's a much harder path. At this point, I think she's a dark horse just because she's so threatening and doesn't seem to have people yeah. that are as close. I mean, we've got pairs. We've got trios. You know, Danny and Heidi have been together from the jump. The 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 Ratu... Oh God, this, this board behind me is really the worst setup. The Ratu girl is <laughs> super close. We have, yeah. you know, the Tika three. There's yeah. a reason why couples and pairs and trios are so threatening. And... 
Because they're trust clusters. They're they're trust cluster yeah. voting block alliances. Okay. Well, let me in the fan fiction. Let yes. me tell you, uh, like the path for Franny as Please I see do. it. Okay. And I maybe, love it. I want. And this maybe to hypothetically, okay, Danny ends up going home. Danny is like considered to be a threat, mm -hmm. and and that we see Tika swing back over. And this week they want to take out Danny. Okay. Now Franny is at the final seven in this scenario. But, you know, what do we see in Survivor all the time, especially in the new era? Okay, here's Tika all of a sudden, and they're all feeling really good. All right, we made it so far. And then they start looking at each other. What if what if Carson starts thinking like, hey, you know who's in my way? Jam Jam. Jam Jam's thinking, you know who's in my way? Carolyn. And then, like, what if Tika breaks up? I mean, that is that so crazy? Where or what if it's four to three? If Franny and Heidi mm -hmm. and the Ratu girls yeah. look at each other and go, Tika. Yeah, this four. This is the last chance. There's three of them. Look at them. We didn't worry about them, and there's a, this is the last chance that we outnumber them. Let's get them. Let's get together four women and let's take out Tika. Um, but the other thing that I think is also an interesting storyline to watch. And tell me if you think this is. I'm putting the cart. Before the horse. But here we have Franny has won two immunity challenges, Hannah. I think that she's got a puncher's chance at breaking the record for immunity challenge wins by a woman on a season of Survivor. I believe tying the all-time record, which I believe is five. She has two already. If she stays in the game, she will have potentially five shots Eight seven six five four to win three more immunity challenges. I said this this weekend on the Survivor Academy podcast that I do with the patrons for Beth Dixon or with Beth Beth Dixon. I, I think that against this field, she's already proven that she's great at these challenges. I don't think that that's uh, out of the question for Franny to break the record for immunity challenge wins for a woman and tie the all-time record. I would love to see it. I I think I'm so brought in by her narrative after every win, which is that she didn't even expect to be good at this. Like I think of Adam Klein's fiance, Kaylee, who's a friend of mine, who is a gymnast. She like mm -hmm. balances on one hand. And I've always said, if she ever goes out there, I think she would win all of them because when she falls when she's doing her thing, she could fall off the ledge of a building. I mean, she balances on these high up things. And so these challenges would be like child's play to her. It's just so in her body. So it's not, I, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm conflicted if that could happen just because Franny keeps telling us this, this is such a shock. This could never happen. Um, but I, I would love to see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would love to. It's, even challenge beasts do fall. So it is hard to imagine. Again, like like a gymnast, maybe I'd put my money on that. But it is really hard to imagine one person sweeping every type. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just I, I also think I think she's very, very good at it. And I also feel like that the field, especially if Danny got knocked out, like it's a pretty good field for Franny. It's a good field. I'm just saying other people are still young and healthy. I mean, it's just a hard thing to do. That's all I mean. Mm -hmm. That's all yeah. I'm saying. I yeah. think some of the youngest are also the least healthy. Carson, stop throwing up. It's on my <laughs> whiteboard, Rob. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Carson being 20 is always so, it, it was such a, um, it made so much sense once I once I reminded myself he was twenty watching it back. Mm -hmm. I I think you know, Carson also has a star next to his name on my board. Um, he studies so he, the stars. He studies the stars. Um, but it's just so funny. He is very much a twenty year old. <laughs> yeah. Why do you say that? It's like this confidence that I feel like I had at twenty, where it's like. The way he just so calmly says, I'm the smartest one here. And I'm sure, it, it, not sure, it might be right. But I was like, ah, that's an interesting thing to so calmly and confidently say. And then I looked up that he was 20 and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but um, 
Barfy Carson being a multi-episode arc was surprising for me, says a says a listener. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was um but I, I think you were reading from your notes for a moment. Oh no, gosh. Because um, you didn't turn around. I didn't turn around. That's how you know I'm not reading from mm-hmm. my notes. Uh there's a lot of reasons I think Carson might potentially win it. So it's no um no diss on Carson. I just I looked it up and I was like, oh yeah, he's 20. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's a he's a teenager that just bulked up for this show. <laughs> yeah. So all right, are, are you a fan of uh Carson so far after watching him across uh in nine episodes of this season. I think that he is doing everything exactly right that he should be doing. Like, I think that he has positioned himself. I mean, I always, maybe it's my own experience, but I think that shorter guys have a bit of an advantage, but I also think that he has downplayed himself and socially integrated in a way that's been really impressive. And we've seen it. We've seen him with Kane. We, you know, we watch him sort of play the younger brother and then talk about his strategy only in confessionals. And I think, and, and whether fair or not, I think that, you know, when the a perception is reality, but when it comes to young, smart men, juries tend to have, more of an open mind that maybe the, their perception is a little bit different than the reality if Carson did find himself at the end. And mm-hmm. so he is someone that I think has a shot at it. Um, okay. And I think it's cool he made all the puzzles. Listen, I think he's smart and passionate and did his homework. Okay. Like a kid who a couple years ago got out of high <laughs> was school. A, was a professional high school student. Um, so you said that you feel like that shorter men have an advantage. Is that in life or in the game of survivor in the game of survivor? Also, I once asked Twitter for the statistics on this and I might not be a hundred percent right about shorter men winning, but I do think that, um, when it, not an advantage in the pre-merge I'm talking about in the, well, actually in both a little bit, because so many women with these, Super mm-hmm. physical challenges are ta- you feel targeted. Like if Leaf could have gotten to the final three, he probably beats Kim Spradlin. Who is Leaf? I don't remember. <laughs> it's been okay, so on, long since on, I've seen One on. World. Yes. Um, I just think that um, in the pre-merge, you know, all we've watched the past couple seasons, women be targeted so early because of, in quotes, tribe strength and. Some, you know, men are able to avoid that. But on the same flip side of the coin, when it comes to the merge and these sort of big dudes tend to get voted out in the early merge for being, quote unquote, challenge threats, even though Franny is the one who keeps winning them, shorter dudes tend to slip under that radar as well. Mm. And now this could be completely that's a biased opinion based on my season full of short dudes. Mm-hmm. But yeah. so the, the radar like... is like a bit of a like a limbo pole, uh, easier for the shorter guys to just slip on under. Yes, a little bit. But again, this might not be scientific. <laughs> mm-hmm. OK, so it's, let's I mean, we're just throwing some stuff, some spaghetti at the wall. Maybe we'll do some research later on and see if we can get into this. Um, and then does Sh- height tall play a factor? And short... Um, does what does do you think height plays a factor for women? Um, well, before I get into that, I will say the winner's height is a mixed bag for men on average height. I have looked into these statistics. This jury is ascending height order so far. Hmm. It's a tall Matt, jury. Brandon and Kane. It's a tall jury. Hmm. Um, do tall women, I guess the tallest wo- women men's average height tends to be slightly taller. It's possible. I'm focusing way too much on height and mm-hmm. someone's going to be like, yeah, Hannah's 10th season. It's just 10 too many. She's now <laughs> taking out she measuring tapes. All right. All right. Forget it. All right. Then we'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll go to, on to something else. Okay. All right. All right. How about this? All right. So you say that short men, especially at the, in the finals, could do particularly well. Uh, but then Patrick has a question. 
that maybe uh, goes in the opposite direction. Here's Let's Patrick. Hear it. Hey, Rob, how you doing? I have a really important question for you, and it's more of a situation that I would love you to break down. I think that Danny is a goat, and I don't think Danny has any chance of winning the game. And here's why. I think Danny's the guy on the tribe that actually everyone hates. In this episode, we saw that he got a really heavy villains at it. But if you were paying close attention, you would have seen some other things. First off, he wasn't interacting with the tribe when they were having like special emotional friendship hour. Um, and you saw that happen twice. Additionally, the thing that I was kind of turned off by was I was trying to figure out where this hatred from Lauren went. I think Lauren might just actually not like him. And then that caused Brandon to also kind of dissipate this macho man alliance that we saw happen and take place at the sanctuary. Uh, so what do you think? Do we think that Danny is a goat that if he makes it to the end, there's no way that he can possibly win? Uh, you know, I think in the past we've kind of seen that the producers have bolstered these like big muscular heroes like Xander uh, to make us think and Jonathan to make us think that someone big and beefy can win the game when in reality they probably don't stand a chance. Uh, so what are your thoughts? We'd love to hear you guys discuss this. Okay. All right. Thank you. for coming So, in. all right. A uh, couple of things there from Patrick. Uh, one is Danny. Could he potentially be a goat? Uh I don't know if I agree with everything that uh, that Patrick, uh, all of his reasoning as to why Danny might be a goat. But let's I guess let's just start with the question of do you think Danny actually might be a goat? Um, I'm going to take a step back. And now, listen, both my sh my short nerdy guys do well at the end. And this is probably colored by my opinion. And that and the tall kings do well at the end, too. Oh, that would what, what I'm about to say, a fair critique would be that it's colored by my own opinion. But I think in general, we overuse the term goat to such a crazy degree. Like it used to mean someone who's just unlikable and does nothing and like sort of um, Will from uh, Worlds Apart, um, who's not strategic, not physical, but like is really disliked. Um, but I think that, Someone not playing a good social game like Danny or basically anyone that becomes a losing finalist just because they did not win does not mean they are like an animal being dragged to the end. So I think I know that this might be a rant that is very specific to like a losing finalist experience, but I think we are overusing it just like we're overusing like the term love bombing in the dating sphere just because a guy yeah, or girl can you love bomb on survivor i'm sure you can listen love bombing exists people say way too many lovey things to get you attached and then never meant any of them but just because someone gets excited about you in dating and says a bunch of things doesn't mean they're love bombing it's an overused term so mm -hmm. i just think i would question the first thing that we um just because xander got to the end and did not socially have the perception to get the votes does not mean that xander suddenly was this goat that got dragged to the end um okay. in, so I, would like to just, I just fully think we overuse this. <laughs> um, and I know that's biased with my own opinion. Um, but in terms of Danny, um, I mean, I, I think plenty of people could beat Danny. I don't think he's this unbeatable person. What I think Danny is, at least watching it, is it seems like he's someone that is an easy target to claim as a threat. He did a flashy idol play. He's constantly like looking and moving and people aren't trusting him. And when you want to just be like that guy, that guy who's is who we should target. He's someone who you could point to and do that. But I don't think he's um, unbeatable, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But um Wait, do you think Danny is going to be like everyone's going to want to take Danny to the end? I do wonder. I, I think I said this on one of the other podcasts that um, in the new, in this current era of Survivor, like I kind of feel like, um, you know, like is he going to be the person that the jury is going to want to vote for? I kind of wonder, like, has the paradigm sort of like shifted on his head? If people are like trying to knock like the Danny and the Brandons out of the game, is that maybe like, you know, 
I don't know. The jury want to vote for him. He might be a guy that, that, that like, and look, he might win immunities and and might uh, be able to be a disruptor towards the end. Has but he I won an immunity? Uh, he came in uh, second uh, oh, yeah. versus versus Franny, but um, and and against versus Lauren also. But I, I don't know. I don't think he's like a lock. Like I don't think that people need to go crazy to try to take out Danny. And I don't know if he's beloved. I'm not. I think that the reason he is beatable by a handful of people out there is because there's so much you don't see. And obviously in a shortened season, we're getting less of this, but there are so many things and factors about who a person is and how they're interacting that we don't see when we're just focusing on gameplay. I'm not. So I do agree, Patrick, to, to your question. I'm, I want to be able to answer your question. I don't think that Danny is necessarily this huge unbeatable threat. I just think that um, he is good to pin a vote on. Mm -hmm. And so that seems to keep happening. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you keep saying if the next vote they, they target Danny, they could target Franny, you know, like Franny might be more likable and more threatening. Um, I don't think, you know, Xander was a very confusing case, of course, where I think with Danny, we yeah. see. Tika uh, should target Franny because I, I feel like just not to uh, interrupt, but th that there's like no chance that Jamie and, and Lauren are going to start working with Heidi and Danny against Tika. Whereas we already outlined a scenario where you take Danny out and Franny could start working with the other three women. Yeah. I mean, Franny seems to be a more powerful, socially connected player than Danny. I think Danny to Patrick, your point, I think Danny and Xander are being presented pretty differently. You know, we didn't really see signs of social dislike other than a few people with Xander and <clears throat> problem i think with the storytelling that season is like our winner was also severely undertold um in relation to xander um but with danny i feel like we could see uh different people potentially beat him i just i feel like they keep pinning it on him and so i feel like in some ways some people find him threatening okay Speaking of people that we're not going to call goats, let's bring you, in a question. Not, I want to be clear. Hold on. I'm not offended. I'm not. I, I understand I have a personal perspective on this. I just think it's overused. I think that the original idea, and I get it. It's a person that, the, that you're like, oh, the jury will never. But I just think that there are more intelligent ways to talk about things. And that yeah. most people, and I'm sorry for whoever joins this club, who lose at the end will be called this by a portion of the audience. And it's just like, it's a frustrating perspective. <laughs> That's okay. All, All right. Well, there we go. Then we got this Our question club. today from yes. uh, your friend and mine, Owen Knight, who says, yes. "Who, if anyone, is joining the club this season?" And we see you are both making the official sign of the zero vote finalists. Owen's so lovely, isn't he? Yes. Um, I think you should scroll you catch down. Catch on the B&B. Yes. Okay. Stephen Stephen Fishback. Oh, he, if you go to that to tweet, say? Stephen Fishback got some heat for his answer. Ooh. Okay. There's some controversy. I Let's I didn't see. read all the things, Such but I did photo. see this. Um. Let's see what it seems like. Carolyn. Uh oh. And then uh, what were the replies? Seven replies. Seven replies. <laughs> okay. Um. And then. Uh, what David Bloomberg said? How dare you? Okay, boy, I that's not wanted... that bad. I thought he was gonna get flamed. Okay, he didn't get flamed, but I just thought it was an interesting. I have so many thoughts on the like controversy and the replies, but um, who would be a zero vote finalist? I just first I want to address the Stephen Fishback saying Carolyn thing, if I may. Yes, because I had so many thoughts about this. I love Carolyn, like everyone does. She is TV gold. You know, sometimes you have these people that are just next level TV um, and you're just in awe. Like Gordon of... Ramsay. Yeah, she's basically the Gordon Ramsay of Survivor. Um, but 
and every expression being so transparent. And it's also very clear to the audience that Carolyn is so aware and so intelligent about what's going on and making moves and doing these things. And I think I fully understand the hype uh, and I am a part of it. And I, I think it could go either way. I think either, you know, the, Carolyn reveals herself because she's sort of been hiding behind this mask of goofiness or we've seen multiple instances on the show. We saw the bro Alliance ignoring her. And then we saw Brandon, a confessional from Brandon saying into the camera that Carolyn does whatever jam jam tells her. And I thought these are two instances in which we are seeing insight into some of some of how this bro jury might view Carolyn. Yeah. And so I am a good really, point. I'm really hoping that, you know, the Fran, you know, Franny's and all these people who are seeing her more for who she is, is apparent out there. Um, Perception is reality, though. And if the perception is that she is confused, what I was saying about Carson, I think a character like Carson gets more of the benefit of the doubt from a jury than a character like Carolyn. She has more of an uphill battle. Stephen in the comments says, if Carolyn makes it to the end, she's winning. I refuse to believe otherwise. I really hope so. You know, we saw we saw Marianne, um, you know, be cool and herself and weird and do it. I'm just preparing the listeners for the possibility that because perception is reality, some of the perception of Carolyn might be not accurate. And therefore the possibility of her being a losing finalist is not 0%. And I do not want her joining the club as Stephen predicted, but I'm just saying it is something like that could be a possibility. Can she pull a gabbler and explain her reads? Boozy 703. Boozy, I would love to believe that she could. It's really, there are some types of jury people dynamics where it is harder to get the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Some people get the benefit of the doubt more. Gender can play a part in that. Sometimes it's just personality. And so I think we have to keep this in mind. Um, when it comes to Stephen Fishback's tweet, which I have now discussed more than the question itself, which is yeah. that who is who is the zero vote finalist? It, it's interesting to me. Um, so I, I don't know. Uh, like I, I feel like that from the like television show, and not to like get to like galaxy brain here. I mean, if would they show us so much of Carolyn being misunderstood? And then, like, uh, you know, showing us, um, you know, uh, so much of, like, how Carolyn is actually seeing the game, only to have the jury deliver, like, this truly, like, unsatisfying result, potentially, where they don't see what she's doing. And I I don't know. I guess that's kind of been the story. But I also feel like, I I don't think, like, do they want to make the audience so mad? I mean, Gabler Cassidy. Yeah, but I don't think that we that we saw all of Cassidy's like, you know, we we didn't see Cassidy like talking throughout the game, like uh, anything like Carolyn, where she was talking about how like people don't uh, like are in, uh, like they they don't believe me. I'm t- I'm telling you what's going on and they think I don't know what's going on, but I do like yeah. we didn't get that as a story. You know, and I hope the listeners understand, I I am so torn and I could totally see your perspective and it might be true. I just, we've seen so much of people not listening to Carolyn and I, I, I just, a small part of me has a fear that we're going to watch that play out. It's certainly, I'm, it's certainly a possibility. It, it certainly could happen. I think she's more likely to lose in the fire than mm. to um, ultimately um, get to the final three and be a, a, a zero vote finalist. Um, to answer Owen's question, I think uh, we definitely have other contenders for joiners of the club. Um, I think it really depends on the combination. Um, 
I, it's a hard and not an appealing club to join. I am a part of it. So I, I mean, no offense to this, yeah. but um, you know, we've seen, I, I don't quite, obviously watching it back might be very different than the experience of actually being out there. But someone like Jamie has been Jamie, sort I of, think. well, yeah. ever, well, she's just been so present throughout the season but, you know, the story hasn't really given her credit for the things going on and sort of has made her like the punchline in sometimes. Um, so I think that's definitely a possibility. Uh, I'm just going She's, through all the Can I just weigh in on that? Uh, that yeah. in, so a lot of ways that Jamie has been the anti-Carolyn where that mm. we get c confessionals from Jamie where it's like, like, oh, they don't even know. They don't believe me. I'm the most valuable player out here. And it's like, ha ha, like dodo music, like edited for comic effect. But we get like similar sentiment from Carolyn. And it's like, oh, like Carolyn is right. Like, uh, and, and maybe it's because we know that mm. Carolyn actually is right. And some of the things that Jamie is saying are uh, also, she's talking about her, her idol. Yeah. It's stuff like, like you just said, sorry, I interrupted, but like music, perspective, who's like, right in the moment i say this with a heavy heart i mean if i'm just going through you know the people like you know franny i think has a has a big shot if she's able to find a path danny i don't know might be but it would be harder heidi and lauren we haven't until the past couple episodes have haven't been a big part of the story so it's just I, i'm just looking at everything through a storytelling perspective mm -hmm. um but I don't know. Do you have any other? I think I mean, that's the only person. And, you know, I do think that. Um, May you know, I read there... Carson wrong, but I don't know. We've seen him connect. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I, I think, you know, uh, you know, I, I think Heidi, there's a scenario where uh, it could happen where uh, people are upset with her. Um, you know, I, I, you know, we don't know. It's a lot, a lot of game left. You know, I could, you know, Heidi's been given weird credit lately for like the actual name each episode, but you know, the, I keep calling it the wrong thing. It's not the stolen vote. It's the control gotcha. vote. Hmm? Control of vote. The control of vote, not the gotcha vote. I don't know why I was going to, the got the control of vote was so odd. And then, I, I've liked hearing, you know, we hear more from the people we haven't heard from the past couple episodes. I just think usually in a storytelling perspective, we want to know why the people from the final three got from start to finish. And that would be a little bit harder with um, Heidi or Lauren. But I, I see what you mean about Heidi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk. Someone a asked. Bit about... Oh, sorry. Oh, Someone in the chat asked how my dog was. I yeah, how's have your to dog? scroll out up she's amazing she's two and a half now y'all um i can show a picture okay i'll show a picture onto the camera all right this is, uh, this is the point of the podcast that, yeah, yeah as you're bringing up a picture of a dog to show on the podcast there's her uh, eating a cupcake okay yeah is that a dog she's, cupcake or a human cupcake it's a dog cupcake for those concerned okay all right um yeah we someone said oh uh, rio said show us your dog too um, See, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep talking Survivor right now uh, with all due respect to Rio. <laughs> um, but uh, just just to, you know, for a little bit, for a little while longer for the people that are no, interested in the fun. Survivor show. That yeah. Is, thank you for keeping us on track. Yeah. Um, all right. And, and look, we're happy to see your dog, but I'm here every day. I, I could show you my dog anytime. You know? OK. Yeah. All no, right. that's it's a fair it's a fair. I'm so focused. Now, mm -hmm. now I'm very focused. It is a, I, I, I stopped the podcast flow to talk about my dog, but she's great. You guys. Well, you I'm happy. I'm, I'm very happy to Instagram. hear it. Um, Hannah, this week was the return of the rice negotiation. Mm -hmm. were, were you excited to see this staple of every survivor season return? That thrilled. Mm -hmm. Just thrilled. Mm -hmm. I honestly, um, I mean, we got some funny tidbits, 
like Danny being like, you cannot eat for 30 days. Like, that's totally fine. None yeah. of us should be sitting out for oh, rice. Here's what Danny said in his um, confessional. Yeah. Since idea out there that people are going to not do immunity challenge for rice. It's embarrassing every time I hear it. Like, Jeez. It's I, embarrassing? I think that he should think twice about this because I've seen him floss with the machetes, that floss dance. If you're too hungry and you do that, you're going to chop something off. So I think I, he should be happy. About see, I thought you were going to say, if, if you think sitting out for the rice is embarrassing. <laughs> How do I feel about the rice negotiation? I mean, I don't love it. Yeah. I don't think it's that great. I think that there's got to be a more fun way that they can earn rice if that's a part of it. I, I want to see everyone get to vote and everyone get to compete. Maybe I'm an old lady like that, mm -hmm. but I don't know the, the votes, the past, like um, the couple where everyone gets to vote are so much better. And I feel like I want Franny's win to be because she beat everybody. Unless I know the other, the, the kind of other side is, you know, they used to bribe people with food to sit out. Yeah. That to me is a little different. That's like a temptation thing. Right. Um, well, Hannah, this week, um, so I've been doing a series called uh, The Burning Question this week, where I do like a deep dive into one survivor subject. And okay. uh, I talked about sort of like the evolution of how we went from the eat or compete idea, which uh, I actually got called out just now on Twitter. That I actually said the first one was in Panama, and it turns out it was in Guatemala. Um, but that really, we used to have like eat or compete. And Jeff would ask everybody before the challenge about how all right, who wants to play for immunity and who wants to eat today? And you had like a classic temptation of, do you want immediate gratification or are you working towards your long-term goal of winning the game and voting people out? What's it going to be, everybody? And then if for the poor souls who chose to eat, Jeff would drag you to hell. And it would be like, how could you have to? I guess you're. I guess you feel so comfortable. You chose to. You chose to eat. You're. You're a selfish a hole, aren't you? You. You wanted a, a pizza today. How could you do this? You let everybody down, and they would make you feel very badly. And your allies would be like, Yeah, whoa, they, man, that stinks. Why would you do that to us? But now, after Angelina, like we flipped the reward structure around to now be all right. Who's going to be a hero for the tribe today? Who's, yeah. who's going to hook everybody up with some rice? Who's sitting out? Uh, and then and people are like, all right, I didn't want to, but to everybody, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to take, take one for the team today. I'm like, Oh, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for sitting out of the show. Like, what are we doing? Yes, Angelina, the winner of David versus Goliath, does bring up a really good mm -hmm. point. Wow, you completely skipped Mike White. Mike White. This is, is a pro Mike White podcast. No, Hannah. I'm a. Oh, please do not make me. I am so pro. <laughs> come Mike on, White. come on now, Hannah. The co-winner of sorry, I should say the co-winner <laughs> of David versus Goliath, Mike White and Angelina. Yes. Okay. Um, it, come on, I'm a huge Mike White fan. Mm -hmm. I please, I White Lotus. Are you a fan? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Of course, I'm a fan. Okay. Um, I think you know he who he who must not be named uh, is lucky that Mike White decided he didn't want to didn't need a million dollars at the end. Um, yes, but um, yes. So we had a temptation thing on millennials with versus Gen X, which I'm sure you know from your deep research into the temptation versus mm -hmm. play. Um, there was no berating of Will Wall or Zeke Smith for for taking the temptation. Zeke even said to me that it was a way to solidify with his allies that he trusted yeah. them and felt safe. And so I think that it did evolve past temptation slash berating or mm -hmm. challenge. It, it did that naturally. We didn't need this sort of team rice thing. It, it, it had already evolved. Um, personally, I promised myself before I went out there, I would never sit out for a personal food temptation, even if I did not think I would succeed in the challenge. I just really hated the idea that I would sit out and then get voted out and just always wonder. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's been a lot of an evolution. My Matt, not Franny's Matt, pointed out that he had seen some clip of someone in an old school season of Survivor 
getting sick. And Jeff Probst sort of said, you know, you asking to be voted out because you're sick is so terrible and sort of berating him for that. And then now we have, you know, Matthew rightfully is praised for hanging in as long as he did. Mm -hmm. So I think there's been a shift in some of the... Hannah, this happens. At some point along the way, Jeff evolved from the dad to the grandpa. And I think that, you know, your dad is tough. Your dad is like, uh, like, uh, what are you doing? Like, uh, yeah, how could you're, you're quitting. What is wrong with you? Uh, and then, you know, grandparents, they want to spoil the kids. So I think it was maybe over like the COVID break, but Jeff went from, you know, he's the contestant's dad to he's their grandpa. Interesting. I always this just a fresh think take. Of, this is super. I always just think of Jeff as, like an alien that's fascinated <clears throat> by humans. Yes. And okay. he wants us to explain what regret feels like. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, that is a good point also. Uh, th- I think I have some evidence in your favor here. Oh, this is good. going back from at the tribal council. Uh, Jeff Jeff asked the contestants about what, what was it like to get the rice? As soon as we got that rice, we were... Oh, we were different people, right? We felt human again. Yes, it changed us. Wow. And it made us even hungry. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. He so you always, were, you were hungry and then you ate. Wow. He's so fascinated. I remember when he brought out Eric and Jay, just a bunch of people. And then at a live show and asked, them about regret and if they regret the things from survivor for the end till the end of time Mm -hmm. and he was just so fascinated by regret but hearing the hunger clip this supports my alien theory Mm -hmm. um the philippines medevac quit also seemed like it should have been a medevac she looked worse than russell swan right there were parasites there were different things that we're re-looking at sorry to that just i I think when you just start reading uh a comment uh i think i think maybe people either listening to the podcast might get confused that, that this is not your you are reading from your notes like i think that you should say like uh this person in the chat says Yes. Um, I just would like to clarify then any previous things I said that you did not like. That was the chat. I was the chat. You just, yeah. Now I'll be more clear. But if if you ever thought, wow, Hannah's opinion is really, that one's not, that's controversial. (laughs) That was the chat. Thank you, Rob, for clarifying. Um, Next time I'll call up the comment. Thank you for the, (laughs) just kidding, chat. I love it. I'll put it on the screen. Um, Yeah. Yeah. or the rice. I don't love the rice negotiation. I feel though that, you know, I feel like the people that sat out kind of looked at the challenge, weighed their options, their safety. No one was tricked by this idea that you would be safe. I explained yeah. Brenda in fans versus favorites, giving up her family reward and then getting voted out to my boyfriend while watching. And he was really upset by it. He didn't like, that people lied about not voting for the rice sit outers and then voted for them. Oh, okay. he was not a fan of that. Okay. So did he feel like that Danny is a villain after that? I I think he did not appreciate the lie. He mm-hmm. felt like it reflected poorly on Danny. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I uh, got to be careful. All right. Why? Uh, Wait, what are you careful of? What did you uh, do? You're going to lose the audience when you uh, lie like that. Oh, oh, the audience. I thought you meant the podcast audience. I was no, like, what, what are we no, doing? No, no, no. Yeah, that Danny has to be careful. Okay. Um, all right. Let's uh see what else uh do we want to talk about? um how about th- this question? Uh we got a uh, a really great question from one of our listeners. Your mom. My mom. Hi Hannah. Hi Rob. Love your marathon podcast. My question is, who do you think will win this season? I am betting on Yam Yam because he is such a fun character. Kind of reminds me of Hannah. Oh. Also, Aww. I like the storyline that he always gets the people who voted for him. Uh, my other question is, why would the producers allow people to get back onto that slippery rock? We already yes. lost Matthew, who was really a good character. Anyway, can't wait to hear your responses and continue to listen to your fantastic podcast. Uh, th- thank you so much, Liz. So, 
Um, I'm with I'm with Liz. Like, why are we letting? Why the are we letting? I screamed at my. TV. I I have like almost. I feel like there's so little support on this. People are like, it's you can't police what the survivors are you doing. You can not? police. You they police just for the people listening. They police how far away you're allowed to walk when you can't walk when there's a walk going on. They police things. They could have policed people from not dying on their right. Rock. Yeah. There used to be like a little sign that says no tribe past this point. Why can't we put that on the rock? No tribe. Yeah. I was not happy about the rock jumpers after Matthew's untimely demise. Um, I agree. Matthew was fantastic. Uh, Jam Jam is just um, really Do you identify fun. with Jam Jam? Is it that your mom said that Jam Jam uh, I, reminds her I, I of you? I don't necessarily, I, I would be honored, but I don't necessarily think I was as sort of like he, he, he and great as Jam Jam. I do think my mom was pointing out that the people that betrayed him, he then got oh, out. Took it personally. Um, I don't think to take it personally. He just, he has a list, you know? Is that what he, you did? Did you have a list? Um, I had some people that did not include me in votes and things that oh. I sort of, you know, I, I said that everyone who betrayed Michaela, I would put on the jury and I did. Oh. Um, but, uh, you know, I just think he's a really fun character. I'm honored my mom thinks I'm like him. We've heard that Jam Jam, listen, Jam Jam has a star next to his name. It sounds like everyone does from the way I'm talking about it, but it's really, I have four stars next to my potential winner picks. Um, but Jam Jam star is made nervous for me by the fact that people call jam jam a threat like i i i think he will have a hurdle in getting to the end i mean what do you think yeah i do think that jam jam of the tika three does look the most like uh that he is the person who is calling the shots if the tika three is exposed so they've sort of like we're under the radar just as a group but i do think that now that there is going to be a little bit more of the light of day shining on them I do think that he will uh, rise as the threat from that group. So I, I do think that he has a struggle in terms of like uh, his threat level. But I do feel like that uh, if those three got to the end, I do think that he would be able to like just wrap the jury around his finger. He's so He's good. so funny. He's also so funny. Like I think yeah. it's such a tricky skill when you've been – your name's been written down or you've been blindsided to come back and not be angry. But there's a balance because if you're too nice, people think that you just don't know what's going on. And he has this hilarious skill to be like, you assholes. Yeah. But and they love way, it. Like, Jam, Jam, they love, love it. They love it. Like he is just so like has yeah. such good comedic timing. He's with so it. good. He's I, so great. Imagine there was like a bunch of people and I was like, I don't like you. And they would all be like, we hate you. Uh, he could jam jam. Go up to them. And say, I don't like you. And they're like, we love you. Jam jam. Come on. You're the best. I love the way he's just like, I don't know when to stop talking. So here's all my thoughts. Oops. Like he's so funny. Who's Half your people... winner's pick, Rob? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, say, I interrupted, say, but I'm there's, just a, so there's a whole bunch of people that don't like me could, because I didn't say enough good things about them, let alone if I actually said bad things about people. Who is your winner's pick, Rob? <laughs> I uh, my Before the season, it was Carolyn. And okay. so wow. I guess I, I, I felt like that Carolyn... I felt like had the authenticity that we uh, and, and sort of like the no, wow. And that it's a great pick. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and, and that was, that was my thought uh, with Carolyn. I think it is going to be um, like, again, I don't want to like switch in midstream. I winner pick is still in the game. If I, if I say a different name now and Carolyn wins, people say, well, you don't get credit. Because you said a different name. Wait, so you are so you're not gonna say a different name? Do you have? A uh, so I would name? say if I if I had a different name, I, I think that maybe Carson. I think might be more likely to be the winner. Yeah, it. I it's so hard for me 
not to usually I'm pretty good at separating my own stuff or maybe I'm not, maybe I've always been this way, but I really feel like I'm projecting onto this season a little bit where I can, you know, I, first of all, I love Franny and she's in my archetype family. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's, it's there hard were a, not- a couple of questions for you of who's in your archetype. Uh, definitely Franny. She's wonderful. And I am rooting for her. I think the other thing that's hard to not project is just this fear that when, if Carolyn and Carson are not up against Jam Jam, and they're both given the opportunity to reveal that they secretly were the mastermind, even though Carson seems sweet and just like your little brother, and Carolyn is just seems goofy and confused, that the benefit of the doubt will be given to the guy who is smart over the woman who is slightly like weird. And I mean that with all the love. And I'm really rooting to not be right about that. I just, not because I'm rooting against Carson, but just because I'm rooting for Carolyn to get some credit that she deserves, regardless of who wins. Um, But my fear is that, you know, this persona that she has put up a little bit to fly under the radar will not be seen through, but I'm hoping that it is. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, sorry. There's so Can much. Can I bring in a voicemail? Ma- yes, yes. There's uh, let so me... much going on. <laughs> yes, right, let I, me bring I, in a voicemail. Yes, bring it in. Okay, because this is about this subject. Okay. All right. Here is a voicemail that is from Laura. Hi, Robin, Hannah. I have a question for you, Hannah, as a survivor feminist scholar and someone with lived experience of being underestimated in the final tribal and their um, male alliance partner getting a lot of the credit for their moves. Not to rub it in, just bringing it up, and thought that you were the perfect person to ask this to. And I wanted to ask if you think that Carolyn could fall victim to the same fate that you did in final tribal if she ends up in the final three with one of her Tika tribe mates. And also, if you think that she should start thinking about cutting these two men somewhere down the line. I think, personally, this week is too early, but I want to hear your thoughts. Thanks. Bye. Okay. And how should Carolyn be approaching this? Because uh, you're thinking about this. Laura is thinking about this. If Carolyn on the island is thinking about this, does she need to potentially go after the other tikas uh first of all a survivor feminist scholar what a what a title thank you um nothing is as simple as oh it's just a gender thing i want to be clear i'm not saying that because carolyn is a woman and carson is a man that it is simple or boiled down to this i guess the reason i've been projecting a little perhaps and why maybe Laura picked up on some of this is um at 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 some point Carolyn has to understand that the that the perception will become the reality of how the jury is seeing her and we know that she has she has been a force strategically that she has been right strategically. And, you know, for example, Brandon saying she just listens to whatever jam jam does. We know that's not true. We've watched her blindside jam jam. Even if the facts are on her side, like with the listening to jam jam, just doing what jam jam does. Um, if the perception is otherwise, it's going to be an uphill battle. Uh, this is where it becomes like a little tricky, though, because, you know, if you you're like, oh, gosh, well, I have these two strategic guys. I've got to cut them both. Then you could be seen as like you had no allegiances. You flipped. You did. You know, mm-hmm. I think Carolyn's big job and what I hope she's able to do 
is start to communicate what's happening, especially during tribals, to the jury in a clear, concise way so that maybe the jury starts to pick up on the fact that she really knows what's going on. And as much as she has played this sort of confused person, she has to trust that Eve, that, that she doesn't need to lean into that so much, that she has to reveal the sort of confessional Carolyn we see a little bit to the jury and perhaps cut one of her, um, at least one of her, her allies, but it is just such a tricky position. And I've just been trying to dissect how people are viewing the different characters. And it's just so hard to do. And I want to also be clear that Carolyn could definitely win. I'm definitely with you you all that are like, Carolyn's amazing. This is Carolyn's story. I agree. I think it's just the fear of whose story are we being told? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did well, I, I think answer Laura's question? I, I think so. Um, you know, it's interesting that with this Tika three, um, this is a season where you could make a compelling case for all three of those people being uh, the, you know, person who story that we're seeing. So yeah. maybe a, a little bit of a disservice to some of the other players that are out there where you don't feel like as much like it is their story. But for all three of those people, I think you can really make a compelling case for each of them. Yeah, and I'm not also saying that Carson would potentially, or Jam Jam, Jam Jam obviously is such a threat. I'm not saying that Carson would potentially win because of perception only. Carson is obviously very smart and has been, I think the thing I, I, I pick up from the storytelling is that, you know, he connects with Kane over being a nerd. He seems to connect with everyone, you know. Even Ratu thought he was with them because he visited their beach for like a day. In like a day, this guy was able to socially integrate into the tribe. Um, <clears throat> and to be that smart and that socially capable is like a very um, promising resume of stuff to have. Uh, the, the chat is going crazy. I'm trying to see... <laughs> Yes. Um, what What are they doing? I'm trying to see. There's just so many thoughts in here. And I'm trying to bring up mm -hmm. one that... Um, uh, well, don't get lost in the hive mind of the chat. I'm getting the, lost in the hive mind of the chat because I, I want to make sure that we are. <laughs> oh, man. No. Uh, we're, we're, we're having the chat. The, 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 having, they're, okay. they're, they're having their own conversation. Me and you, this is about this is about us. This is about us. And, they can, and, and then, you know, if, if 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 we need to, we'll bring in some bring of their commentary. Yeah. Um. I mean, do you see it differently than I'm seeing it? Like, am I really coloring it with my own experience? No, I think I think that's um, probably how most people are seeing it. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I think there was a big challenge. I think the closer you are to like how you view, view yourself is how others view you, the better chance you have at winning. And I think for me, yeah. to answer Laura's question specifically, I felt like my strategy and my intelligence maybe needed to be covered up with goofiness more than it needed to be. Like that I could have communicated some of my knowledge more clearly uh, th because it's how are you perceiving yourself? Right. And I think, you know, you could be like, oh, like this person just like took credit for things. And I think it's a simplistic, it, it's a much more nuanced answer than that. And so my, as a viewer, I'm trying to figure out how much of Carolyn's strategy and understanding is coming across and with what timing. And it all depends on the next couple of episodes. So I'm really curious. Okay. Help me understand something about Carolyn. We saw yes. Carolyn okay. tell her story about how she has overcome addiction. And uh, she, we got to hear a lot of her backstory and how great her life is now. But she said one thing, which I was a little confused about, and I'm hoping that you can help me decipher exactly what does carolyn mean here she talked about how she loved she loves her life and especially this everything i look at my house and i decorate for halloween and it looks creepy but it's everything that i wanted she said every day i look at my house and i decorate for halloween and and it's creepy it's every, it's everything that i wanted is Carolyn's house always dressed or uh, 
uh, does Carolyn have Halloween decorations up 365 days out of the year or uh, only at, at Halloween time? She looks around and says, this is so creepy. I love it. This is what I always wanted. Will you play it one more time for me? Sure. Every day I look at my house, I decorate for Halloween. She says, every day I look at my house. Every day I look at my house, I decorate for Halloween. And it looks creepy, but it's everything that I wanted. Um, I think she is saying that she looks at her house, pause, she decorates for Halloween. Two different things. Because they filmed this season like in like May. Oh gosh. I feel like there's a 30% chance she's her house is always decorated for Halloween. I think, yeah, I think Carolyn's house is always decorated for Halloween. Remember she said in when she walked in the voting booth and there was like a suit of armor, she's like, oh yeah, I used to have that. Or like there was like a mace. She's like, oh, I had that when I was growing up. Maybe she's like, oh yeah, I forgot about those. Do you think there's like something going on with the chessboard voting? No, thing? I don't no. think so. Um Bobby Hall from the chat wants to say block Hannah from looking at the chat. No, look now. at the chat. Look at the chat. But you don't have to like, you know. Uh, you G- know. Jilly G-, G says she looked. She tweeted her house at Halloween. So she okay. So it's um, at Halloween. She makes. She does a really big deal. I, I thought it my was bro- a- my brother in law does like that too. At, all year. All well, no, all year long he builds Halloween decorations. Wow. Mm-hmm. Are you gonna do crazy things for Halloween now that you have a ginormous North Carolina sized yard? No. No. Definitely not. Okay. No, I mean <laughs> and for Christmas, you know what I do? I put a projector on my lawn and just project stuff onto the house. Yeah, I think Carolyn, I really think it's sweet that she built this life she's so excited about and that she didn't think was possible during addiction. I I I like no seeing doubt. the scene where she connected to people. I just wanted to know is her house always decorated for Halloween or if it's just only at Halloween? I think it's just at Halloween. I think she probably has she's probably a seasonal decorator. Yeah. Okay. With a couple quirky weapons and things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For sure. All right. Um, let's bring in another voicemail uh, from a, a mutual friend of ours. Okay. Here oh. is a voicemail from Alex. Alex Forsen has a longtime listener, fourth time caller. My question is for Hannah Shapiro. Hannah, this season we were blessed with an adorable showmance between Franny and Matt. As an expert on both reality television and romance, what is the key to a successful showmance? Wow. Tough question. My answer was going to be too pointed. I was going to make a call back to my season and say the key to a successful showmance is don't have a pregnant girlfriend at home. That's, (laughs) but that's important. It seems important. I I don't think that's, I don't think that's crazy to say, right? I love Franny and Matt and the showmance for so many reasons, if Mm -hmm. I may, for a moment. No, because that was a big part of Matt and Franny's relationship that they got together that Matt had ended what his old relationship before coming Survivor out started. he didn't have a ring yeah he didn't he right right and that's Justice it that's for figgy that's big <laughs> um oh man uh <laughs> yeah i I, as, as someone who, you know, partakes in the Bachelor franchise as well and dating shows, I mm-hmm. think that watching two people who like lead with their sort of cerebral connection crush, it's just so great. Like we've never had a showmance like this. I think a really big part of it, as someone who is on a season with a showmance, as we've referenced, you know, a lot of their showmance was, you know, beautiful people played to the cameras like loving that this one felt like oh my gosh we like each other ah they're cameras like oh no Mm -hmm. like i like this person and i can't hold it in and it would just trickle up despite the cameras as opposed to because of them and 
there were just, I think we got to watch them discover that it was romantic. Like, I think a lot of times in The Bachelor or even Survivor showmances, it's like, oh, we are romantic now. Mm -hmm. This one, it's like they suppressed it. They suppressed it. Because even, Hannah, when you were out there with Michaela and you were watching Figgy and mm-hmm. Taylor, uh, not Taylor Swift, uh, get together. She that's said, "That's disgusting." That's what Michaela said. Um, <laughs> I mean, we are pretty gross out there. Um, In the middle of the night, I hear a kiss sound, and I was like, "Y'all can't be for real." You stink, your mouth is nasty, you got sand in your drawers, and you kissing somebody. That's disgusting. <laughs> Bobby Hall said, I do think strategic dominance matters to showman's rankings. I agree, but that's not why I not what think the heart this wants. one. Yeah. This is not what is amazing about this to me. It's what it is, is like Franny, watching Franny be told, hey, just act a little more distant to Matt and her being like, okay. And it just bubbling up because they just connect in such a pure way with Mm -hmm. a million dollars at stake. And Franny is smart, you know? Like, I am sure Franny understood the implications. I love, I just loved that. I also, and this is, this was really cool to me. I thought it was cool. I saw Franny as like, I see Franny as like Wonder Woman, where Matt is sort of like the love interest that comes in and then Franny sort of like- He's just Ken? He's not just Ken. Matt is amazing. What I'm saying though is she sort of like outlasts him as this challenge beast. And like so much with Survivor showmances, I know Amber beat Rob. I'm not, I'm not without my history knowledge, but so much with showmances, we see the woman like get voted out very quickly afterwards or the man sort of protecting the woman. And I just feel like it was sort of a reversal of this in such a fun way. And I just loved it. I love that people kept being going up to Franny and being like, so shouldn't we vote Matt out? And her being like, no, no, we shouldn't. (laughs) It was just such a fun reversal and it helps that my boyfriend's name Matt and yeah. and that they are nerds. And I think that we should have more dating shows with nerds. Okay. Are you stumping for them to go on The Amazing Race? Would you watch The Amazing Race if Matt and Franny were on it? Absolutely. I think they should be on every show. They should be on every show? Every show. Um, no, of course. Uh, let them Even ghosts? The ghosts? What's ghosts? Oh, so there's a couple and they inherit a big mansion. Uh, What they don't know is that the house is haunted by Mm -hmm. ghosts from all different eras of history. And only they can see uh, the ghosts. I think actually only the wife can see the ghosts. Uh, And so, but they're always like commenting on everything that happens uh, and making like all these like different comments about you know, what everybody's doing. And it's like uh, an ensemble. Listen, I'd love to see them on Ghosts on the new show, Jury Duty. Uh, someone said, yeah, I just Will they know s- that it's real on Jury Duty? Uh, I don't know that they could do a season two of Jury Duty. I think it will be hard to find someone. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I yeah, think... Uh, you know what? Actually, I mean, I don't know about Franny, but I think Matt Blankenship would be a good person to Jury Duty. Oh, absolutely. I don't want them to be clear. I don't want them doing jury duty together on Survivor. I would like <laughs> Franny to stay in the game, please. Um, yes. yes. I The looks he gives her from the jury. Uh, what was Alex's question? Um, he wasn't what makes a good showmance. Oh, what makes a good showmance is different yeah. for each person. For me, it's that it has nothing to that they're falling for each other despite the cameras, yeah. not to perform for the cameras. So can I just ask you, and I always like to look at this through like a historical perspective. Like, do you think that mm-hmm. after, you know, how well by the audience Matt and Franny were received, that do you think that in the coming seasons we will see more showmances on Survivor? Or do you feel like that because, oh, it put a target on Matt's back, we'll see less showmances happening on Survivor? Um, 
I think it will still be seen as sort of a thing that can put a target on your back. I hope, I hope we continue to see different types of showmances. I'd really, this, the, these, these seasons have been more and more LGBTQ friendly. I'd love a queer showmance personally. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, I think Franny and Matt, you know, he didn't fully get voted off because he had romantic rumblings with Franny. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think anything that puts a target on your back is things people are nervous about. So mm-hmm. I think I think showmance is, you know, <laughs> Robin Amber and sort of, you know, the same way like um, any success. So a Robin Amber success put a t- put a t- target on future showmances, you know, just like um, the all women's alliances, you know, they still the witch's coven still makes people so afraid of God forbid women work together. Like anything that's had success in the past will probably have success. Um, or we'll probably have targets moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'm, I women's alliances, showmances, um, guys from Harvard. I don't know what the, the <laughs> list is here. <laughs> but yes. Op- open to all. Okay. Open. Yes. All right. But yeah, it was my fate. I, I think it's great. All right. Senior King has a question. Uh, right. Senior King was inspired by Jam Jam comparing himself to James Bond in the last episode. Did you catch that? When, I uh, did. 00, 00 yeah, 007, he, he said. said this. I'm a little James Bond, you know. 00, what is it? 007? Yes, 00. Um, so... Which current or former castaway would make the best on-screen James Bond? Now, have you, have you watched any James Bond? I have not. Um, I know that... All I know is that were men angry because there was a female James Bond? That's maybe all I know about Uh it. Yes, yes. Uh, a lot of men were really pissed uh, when they made the uh, female James Bond. And um, it's he not right. Gone- James Bond right. has carries guns. I don't know why it's 007. To answer your question, I could have just mm-hmm. said no, but I will go with Jam Jam. Yeah. As... But shouldn't shouldn't men get over it that there's a a woman James Bond already? <sighs> Jamie Bond. Same with when there was a female Doctor Who. Wasn't everyone up in arms? It's not realistic sure. for a regenerating time traveler to be a different gender. Mm-hmm. That's what's weird about it. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, I think these characters can be played yeah. across the genders. <laughs> enough. Can I also just like uh, just also you know that this, this is a sore subject for me for yeah. all the like uh, like toxic men on Twitter like calling her Jamie Blonde. Uh, you know more the, about this than I do. <laughs> yeah, come on, stop it. Get over it. You Get heard it here it. first, men on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Rob Sesterdino Danielle is Craig, sick. like stop it. Um, I think Jam Jam would be a hilarious James Bond, but as is made evident, I don't know what James Bond does. Why is it 007? Why is that the number? That was just the, they get like a license number. And so that I guess that he was like the seventh one. So there was 004 at some point, 003? Yeah, it seems like, I don't know why they weren't just one, two, three, four. Like, it seemed like a little bit, like, vestigial. Now, to, he's not like, a superhero. He didn't get bitten by, like, a fancy car. No, no. He has cool toys. Uh, although, you know, in, a, in some ways, being 007 uh, is a little bit like going on Survivor, right? Like, so you sort of, like, thrust into a, a crazy situation. There's a lot going on. They give you a bunch of gadgets, and they have to explain how everything works. I can't participate in this metaphor. I've clearly proven <laughs> myself not to be. But you a get James the Bond idea. Game. He's a spy. Knowledge is power. Daniel Craig. Knowledge He's is someone power if I... would be a good a good name for a James Bond movie. I saw people on Twitter was like, "Why is this knowledge?" Is power? Yeah. They were like, why is this knowledge is power thing being brought up again when it's not even on the season? And I'm like, because the vote, nothing makes sense if you don't know yeah. why everyone switched advantages. Mm-hmm. I was just disappointed that Sarah's advantage left the game. The, the inheritance uh, advantage. I wanted to 
see how the fuck that would be played. Yes. So I, uh, that I could tell you uh, the, yeah. the, like, they've come out and said like how it would yeah. work, uh, but that they would you would play your you. I think she plays it like in the like when she votes and drops it in there. And then at the end of tribal council, she would then like the next day she would get everything in her bag. Interesting. She plays it secretly. Yes, she plays it secretly. It's like huh. a coupon. Uh, it's like okay, buy one get one, and then she ends up like getting all the advantages that got played. But no one knows. Nobody would have known. So she does. She, does she play it after the advantages are played? No, she plays it before the, uh, that. She plays it when everybody votes. So oh, okay. So like if up, she had been there and she had known Danny was going to play her his idol. Yes. Then she could have just played it knowing that to get an idol. Yeah. And there's also some other like cool things that people worked out of like if she had a real idol, like which she thought she did, she could have potentially played the real idol one night and the inheritance advantage and then boomeranged her idol where she would have used it and then got it back the next day. I've really gotten us off track, but that it just, okay. I don't want more advantages, but I was so curious about how the inheritance stuff would work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, these um, inheritance things, they can be very tricky. That's why they have like somebody there to, you know, read the wills and stuff like that. So not will. Do you think wall. producers spend a lot of time in these confessionals just trying to explain to contestants how this shit works? I think so. I, I think that they probably do. Although, uh, like, not that we had a lot of idols and advantages uh, when I played Survivor a very long time ago. But back then, they were just like, eh, "You'll, you'll find out." Like they were like, like, like you don't want to tell us anything. Like, uh, you'll see. Yeah. Gosh, I'm like old school now, Survivor. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just had so idols I'm, and no joke. Legacy. Yeah, seven years ago. People recognize me sometimes because they, they've like binged in the pandemic, Millennials Gen X, yep. and they'll come up to me. And I have to be like, on Netflix. I don't know. Are we done with that? Are we done with putting New Survivor on Netflix? I'm not sure. I think 33 would be in line to be next potentially since we just had, um, just mm -hmm. based on the order. But I have to shout at people like, I'm 31 now. Mm -hmm. I'm an old lady now. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you'll celebrate when you are 33. Oh, interesting. I think it, must, it would be funny for Will Wall to have our season come up since mm -hmm. he's now like a lawyer for the Air Force or something. But he was I know. 18. I, I know. I, and your season was on so long ago. Will Wall is actually in Gen X now. Yeah, actually. He's a Gen Xer. OK, here's the crazy thing. Adam and I were I was with I was, I was see, I saw Adam recently and we were like most of the millennials are now the ages of the Gen Xers. Not all of them. Yeah. Also, half of the millennial tribe is engaged oh. or married. OK, it's more than half if you count taking off and on the ring, but but more at least half. Are married or engaged? There's more than half is sitting on. And I'll talk to you about it after. I don't okay. want to podcast it, but yeah, okay. basically. But this is like a logic puzzle. <laughs> I think I did the math right, but be okay. Long story short, <clears throat> we're all old and married. Yeah, yeah. not me. I'm not married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, could I tell you just uh, yeah. uh, as an aside here, uh, as we're talking about love and and the test of time that tonight. I know this, this is 20, 20 years ago. This is the 20 year anniversary to the day of when the first lady of podcasting, my wonderful wife, Nicole Sesternino, and I uh, got together 20 years ago this very night that she agreed to uh, be officially my girlfriend. How about Congratulations. that? How about that? Here, let me see. I mean, uh, let me bring up. I, I made a post today. No, this is so, about this this. Is so 20 yeah. years. How do you I, feel? Your yeah, relationship you could play this on is, the millennial tribe. This is, toy, this is 20 years ago. You know, you could tell. Look at this giant TV that's behind us. Oh, wow. Look at you guys. This wasn't that night. This was, I don't have a picture from that night. 20 Aww. years ago. Um, but I, I, and uh, I could tell you also that Survivor aired that night as well, Hannah. 
Wow. Just to bring, keep it on subject. It was 20 years ago tonight that it was the Survivor, the Amazon final six. People and, in the chat are very happy for you. Lots yeah. of hearts. Survivor, the Amazon final six. And then, um, you know, it, 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 you know, some say, you know, maybe one of my best survivor moves. And uh, th this young this young woman saw that and said, OK, this is this is the kind of guy I want to hang out with. What is the secret to a 20 year relationship? Oh, you got to be willing to let a lot of stuff slide hannah you can't you can't have a short one actually it turns out one of you actually can have a very short fuse but the other person has to have a very long fuse big long fuse there you have it if if you if if you can let things slide listeners you too mm -hmm. can 20 years later mm -hmm. yep you gotta congratulations. You, 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 you can't let every single thing be a big deal. You got what are you doing listen. for the anniversary? What if what uh, we're gonna have we're part? gonna have some dinner after this? Nice. It's a Monday. That's not that exciting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's 20, 20 years ago tonight. Christy got voted out on Survivor the Amazon, and Nicole became my forever girlfriend. Wow. Isn't that romantic? It's so romantic. I like yeah. love. Yeah. Okay. I cry but we're not wedding. a showman's Hannah. We're uh, there, and we're not even like a. I guess are we a podman's? But like I, I think, think we're a already podman's. We were. We didn't get together on the podcast. Hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. maybe not a podman's. Like because if Tyson brought his girlfriend onto Survivor, that's not a showman's. Now his wife. Yeah. Because they were already, they were already dating together. before the show. They were already together. Yeah. And I don't know if it's a podman's because I kind of feel like that. Uh, I have to. Half the reason why she's mad at me is when she's like, are you still doing that podcast? Okay, it's my job. I got to. Okay. All right, Hannah, let me get let me bring it back to Survivor. The chat is being very gracious, but maybe the maybe the podcast listener is shaking their fist at me. Okay. They're going to say go back to letting Hannah read the chat. No, I I realize I realize that I, I should address the listeners as much as I address the chat. We're all a mm -hmm. part of this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I love that people uh, still listen to this podcast. I, I, mean, I, I, I love on. it too, personally. But the, you know, your that, podcast, of course, they listen to. Yes, but that people yes. still... Um, They're very excited. We get the most voicemails. I love that so much. Um, would you mind if I ran and filled out my water glass? Briefly? Yeah, that's fine. Would I will. You, I, I yeah. will. Uh, you know what? Uh, how about this? Let's take a well, in the podcast. Let's take a break. And then uh, I, and then uh, we'll come back and I'll answer uh, some other questions. OK, amazing. I just I do want to fill my cup so that I can keep chatting. OK. OK. How does this work? Just go. Uh, we'll I'll Why cut am this I part putting out. my hands up? I'll cut this part out of the the podcast, and then uh, okay. I'll just uh, let me just uh, I'll just vamp with the chat. Okay. Okay. You vamp. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. Here, let me. Uh, or should I answer my? Uh, I'll I'll take questions from the chat or answer my uh, Instagram comments. Uh, either one one or the other. Okay. Chat's goal is to to, to derail. Rob is to keep it on the tracks. Yep, I guess that is a, like the the little the the dance that we do. Oh, perfect time to show us dog pics. Okay, fine, that's a good point. Uh, Rob can entertain us. I mean, I, I like to think so. Okay, my oh, boy, uh, you all are getting part of the show that's not even on the regular podcast. Okay, so let's see. Um, Happy anniversary. Thank you. Yeah. Do I have any recent dog? You know, I do have recent dog pictures because my kids uh, freaking take my phone and take pictures of the dog. Uh, so let me go ahead and I'll show you some stuff. Okay. All right. Here, let me see if I can. This is this is the dog like on the stairs. There she is. Okay. Uh, then <laughs> um taking pictures of the dog on the stairs and then let me see if I can find some more another dog picture here for you and uh, bup, 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 bup. 
Okay, impromptu dog pictures. That's that's uh not a good not good for the podcast. A lot of kid pictures. Too bad nobody uh wants to see pictures of my kids. Um but let me see. I oh, know I somehow gone into Disney pictures. All right. Um still here, Hannah's DJ. Let's see. I mean, maybe if I search for dog, I'll have some other good uh, dog pictures. Okay. Dog in Raleigh. Okay. All right. Here's here's some pictures from... Here. Here's a picture of her looking kind of uh, shaggy. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah. This... You got the dog? We got the dog pictures? Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh my kids take my phone and they take like a lot of crazy pictures okay okay all right there you go um, all right i oh tell yes me when we're back in. yes okay um all right here we go all right and we're back here hannah has water yes Water is okay. great. I also was informed by my Matt that he did leave a question for us. Oh, in, okay. In the One, Instagram uh, post, it said you could leave it on the post. So he wrote it onto the Instagram post. Okay. All right. We'll have to see if I can. Uh, I can uh, ask it if you'd like. Go for it. So it was on the R hat. Is it a question to you? Yes. For us on the pod from my Matt. Here, why well, you know I can probably bring it up here uh, if you want yeah, to just uh, vamp it. for one one vamp. moment here. Okay. I can vamp all all day. Bring I hope you guys Rahat are Rams. listening to the um, the DJ music, but not yes. hopefully too much. But I feel like it made a resurgence of uns yes. Yes, the DJs the are in, in their bag. Okay. All right. So uh, here we go. And uh, we have some questions for the feedback the show. One. Okay. Uh, if you were redesigning American coins, who or what from the season would go on the nickel and the dime? Boy. So I... who's, on the, who's on the nickel now? Jefferson? Oh, gosh. We should really look this up, shouldn't we? So I just I ranted to him recently that I feel like the words nickel and dime should be switched. Now I know nobody else is probably gonna agree to me, but nickel feels like like I know the dime is worth more and the nickel is worth because the nickel is bigger. Less. No, I feel like the nickel should be worth the bigger coin should be worth less still. I, I'm all on board. I just feel like the word nickel feels bigger but this is not the point of the question and also nobody's going to agree with me that that they should be switched hmm. who is currently on the nickel and dime rob so okay we know so, I, be so I i believe that the yeah, the nickel i was right is jefferson and then uh it, it's uh I, I think is it fdr is on the dime let's see who is on the dime okay uh yeah fdr okay so I'm going to be very literal here, okay? Uh, on the nickel, now I'm tempted to say, okay, nickel is worth five cents. Uh, go with somebody from Survivor 5. But Jefferson, our third president, is on the nickel. And so, oh, now was the question about this season or it which Survivor? It was this season. Oh, was see, I was going to say, put, put Ethan Zahn on the nickel and put Tom Westman on the dime. Although but he was the 32nd president, FDR, um and so like i'm a little bit i'm like oh wait 10 is is a dime so that would that be Tom means... westman so then you'd have to put michelle fitzgerald on the dime people are like okay even better <laughs> sappy panda from the chat said ken mcnichol since his name is Nichol. ken mcnichol okay did you ever think he should be ken mcdime ken mcdime should no i think ken mcnichol mcnichol fits okay. um so who from this season would go on the nickel and the dime? Well, should we do the the fifth the fifth boot and the tenth boot? Uh, let's see. Who would, who would the fifth and who would be, now? Are we counting Bruce? Uh, we so count Bruce. Bruce. Okay, so then it was Bruce, then Maddie, then what happened next? Was that Helen then? And then after Helen was Sarah, and then Matthew was Matthew on the nickel. 
Claire. I'm sorry, Claire. All right, put Claire on the nickel. Claire on the nickel. Have we overcomplicated this? What what, what what do you want to what do you want to do? I want to put um Sarah on the nickel. I'm following Sam. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Chad. Sam Moore like is Jam all Jam over the place. On my nickel. Carolyn well, Jam, on my nickel. Well, Carolyn on Jam Jam be on my quarter. quarter on a silver dollar. We're wasting Jam Jam on the nickel. <laughs> we are <laughs> okay. Jam Jam's on the silver dollar. I'm, I'm saving Jam Jam for be- for better denominations of money. Oh my goodness. Sarah was five. Kane is 10. Mm-hmm. So that by that, by that math, mm-hmm. Kane is on the dime. Sarah is on the nickel. Yeah. We're going to put, decided. we're going to put Kane on American money. Not even an American citizen. Put him on a toonie or a loony. Okay. Kane is on the loony toonie. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Jill says I think Kane would be on the loony. Now, I, and now, are we putting? Should we put like Mary Ann on a, on the Canadian it's this money? Season. It's from this. Oh, season. from this season. Okay, fine. It's fine, but you know, that's it. Um, all right. So that was a that was an insightful question. All right. Um, I'm ready for more co- questions or Okay, here's mails, another question. Anything. Here's another question from the Instagram. Yeah. Uh, this is from Kaz uh, Mafraz, who says, is this season's winner hiding in plain sight? Heidi's edit feels in line with an Erica slash Gabler, and she's gotten credit for the Matt and Kane boots. I could see her at the end with Jamie, Carson, and Carolyn taking it. Is she hiding in plain sight? I feel like I Heidi was not in plain sight for most of the episodes until recently. I think that's the difference. Um, I think that Gabler, Gabler or Gabler? I believe it is Gabler. Gabler. Um, Gabler was present throughout the season yes. leading up into it. Heidi has had a real resurgence She's really, oh, frick, it's not stolen vote. It's uh, capture the vote. No, control. that's capture the flag. Control the vote. She's really uh, done a control the confessionals and taken some confessionals finally. Um, Heidi <laughs> Heidi has gotten credit for po- who, what the name is the past couple tr- episodes. And that's been interesting. She's, she's sort so of she's emerged. the episode, you say? No, she's not naming the episode. She's We've seen her say the name that is the correct name. That ah. goes but we haven't seen her getting credit beyond putting the name out there. Like, we still feel like and we're she being has an told idol. T- Tika's story. She does have an idol. Rob, will she use her idol better than she used her capture the flag vote? Well, it depends on if you think she used it poorly or not, because I think that there is some debate. What do you think of that? Oh, I I, th- I didn't realize there was debate. I think that... Um, See, that's what you miss on a binge, where I think that, you know, she basically uh, felt like that she used it for kind of surgically to try to not create a lot of waves. I think she somehow both created waves and didn't. <laughs> yeah, she's the anything. worst of both worlds. Yeah, I think she. Got That's an hard valid both. argument too. <clears throat> I mean, I would have thought, you know, steal Brandon's vote, have him put it on <clears throat> Jamie, either force Lauren to use the extra vote on Jamie, or maybe Lauren doesn't want to use her extra vote. Let's Jamie goes home, goes go home, or she ties it up. And yeah. suddenly it's a tie. I well, thought there was just so many fun things so, she could have done. Yeah, that that is a uh, good question. You know, we talked this through with Christian the week of the podcast where we felt oh, like that. Uh, well, me. well, uh, we do need you because oh, that right, uh, we have here. some new information here <laughs> where Lauren, um, you know, if, if hypothetically, OK, uh, that Heidi controls Jamie's vote, puts it on Lauren. We said, oh, that's going to lock up Lauren's extra vote. But would Lauren have been able to pass off her extra vote to, say, Jamie at the tribal council where the extra vote would have been able to save her? 
as we saw Lauren pass off her extra vote uh, in this episode. So you think she would have given Jamie the extra vote before tribal? I think that she would have still been able to hand off the extra vote at tribal council. Why before... would she need to hand it off? Maybe because I'm... because that if she would not have been able to extra vote if if there was a tie on her name at tribal council. You can, so if she... I, can you correct me if I'm wrong? I thought the extra vote you just get to use one time. You don't but get if to it's keep a, using in. But if it's a tie, I do. I, it I do wouldn't believe be you. a tie unless she used the extra vote. Um, what I'm saying is, okay, in this hypothetical, Heidi steals Brandon's vote, puts it on Jamie. Yeah. So now we have potentially three on Jamie, and then we have wait, three on Jamie, and then Lauren votes twice for Matt, let's say. Yeah. And then Jamie votes for Matt. It's a tie. That's three and three. In the revote, she's already burned her extra vote. No, she gets to use it in, on the tie. Wait, why does she get to use it on the tie? I it's believe one piece of parchment. Uh, I stole. believe that's the kit that was uh, in Survivor 41. Chat, correct it. Correct. Stop me if I'm wrong, but I believe uh, when they use the extra vote, Shan used the extra vote to get out in this year. I believe she got to use it on the revote. But here's my question: the whole thing with this extra vote was that she didn't use it. It was she took one vote that she missed and got to slip it away. I okay. She could use the vote. And, and on here's the vote? second wow. part of the question: Is is wow, that's crazy does Heidi? Con she got control of vote. Does she control the vote on a re on a tie? So what a you're saying is it has to go on Lauren because on on a revote, Lauren is the only one that doesn't get to vote. Mm -hmm. I see. So it has to be. You have to steal. If you, you, steal to, you have to Brandon, put a vote on Lauren, but put it on Lauren. Is, if Lauren is allowed to hand off the extra vote, that doesn't matter who you put it yeah. on. Yeah. So you you have you steal Brandon's vote, you put it on Lauren. Maybe I'm being too hard on Heidi since clearly I got confused. So you steal Brandon's vote, you put it on Lauren. Lauren uses hers to tie it up with Jamie, but it's a tie. So then Lauren at some point can't vote. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What what was the original question? Is Heidi um, hiding in plain Heidi sight? Heidi in plain sight. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, How about this? Yeah. I don't think she's been in sight for enough of this, this season. But okay. I, it's not a diss on her. We just haven't seen her. Hannah, Nolan has a question. Besides yeah. an idol being rehidden uh, from an idol being played, are we going to see any more advantages uh, brought into the game? Episodes have improved as the idols and advantages have uh, dissipated. What do you think? Ugh. Brandon, I I hope we get just more interpersonal decisions and not advantages. I feel I know I, I tweeted this, but like it's like the contestants keep getting betrayed by the advantages mm -hmm. and the twists and not each other. Like the, the people are betraying each other is it's all secondary to the the advantages and the twists. Like we saw in the merge vote almost an interesting vote with people wanting to betray each other. And then instead the, the game sort of betrayed them. Um, and I, I think like, I want to see does Carolyn and Carson decide to turn on jam jam. Does Franny, is she able to work with her sort of quirky allies that are sort of each got their own quirks. Like I want the people complexity. So I'm hoping that we get to see more and more of how these dynamics and alliance voting blocks to groups mm -hmm. play out. What do you think? Is there going to be probably there'll be more twists though? I assume. I, I think advantages. that I think we're if it's 43 and 44 are the same. We're definitely still going to get a pick your champion. Do you remember that one? where somebody got to win bet immunity because, and that's fine, whatever, that's harmless. Uh, and that was at the final seven. So let's see. I don't know if we'll get anything else uh, this let's, week. Let's pick your champion again. That Cody found an, an advantage and he got to bet on who was going to win the challenge. And then even oh. if he didn't win, he got immunity if he won. I feel like that they, they want to like put like one extra thing in every episode. Yeah, Brandon, unfortunately, I don't think we're, or maybe you're a big fan, Brandon, of all these twists and advantages. I, I just really want to see 
how the interpersonal dynamics play out. I really want to start to understand how each player is being perceived out there. And that's all a human thing. <laughs> yeah. And that's why Jeff wants to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Have you listened to the On Fire, the official Survivor podcast? I have seen rumblings about it. I yes. have not. I, he's an up and coming podcaster. You're going to binge so I it. Really support yeah. him. Yes. Yeah, support independent podcasters. <laughs> and um, what have you got in from that though? What? It, what? Why? Well, like, you what? get to you get to find out a lot about like the process of making Survivor. But what I what have you gained from that that you um, feel like is important to this conversation? Well, that's a loaded question. Um, but no, Jeff loves to. They're always coming up with ideas. It's a loaded question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's, um, you know, okay. Michael Butler, O'Rear Jr. wrote in a question. And I'm not, I'm not even going to read what he wrote. Oh. Um, but I I'll just use it as a jumping off point of what did you think about last week in the challenge? Where Danny got Jeff's attention only to break wind? I think it's a, uh, it's a loaded question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what do I think of Danny farting? Yes. Is that the point of the podcast we are at? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think it's like two hours in. I mean, from a strategic point of view, I think it holds a lot of um, steam. Yeah, steam. I'm trying to think of oh. flatulence jokes. I don't think. I mean, <laughs> just steam. Too far to steam. Just, oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my. I never thought about the temperature. Um. No, like a like a puff of smoke. Oh no! No, I got it. I got it. Like clouds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Danny is we can a, move on. Is a, we can move on. Danny is. No, I just think Danny yeah. is like. A, but yeah, yeah, a, you know, you, a you're right, Hannah. This is a character. complex guy because yeah, the same guy that's like, hey Jeff, listen to me, fart. Also the says idea out there that people are gonna not do an immunity challenge for rice. It's embarrassing every time I hear it. Yeah, that f f fart on national television. Hey, great moment. Sit out of a challenge for rice. Embarrassing. You're embarrassing yourself. You're going to I sit mean, out I... of the challenge for rice. You should be in the challenge farting your brains out. Idiots. I mean, get out, get out in there and start farting. I don't want to hear about your sitting out. Embarrassing. The difference between Carson on and off rice is so extreme. Maybe Danny doesn't hold that extreme on and off rice. Maybe for him, it's the fart. He farts and oh, what if he starts Carson... working. What if Carson could have participated in the challenge and then one up Danny and said, Hey Jeff, and then just threw up. What is your friend? Steven Fishback had an upset stomach publicly on survival. Yes. Does he feel Severe for Carson? Gastrointestinal distress. Um, no, I, I don't. He did not mention anything about that. I just, I listen, we all have had upset stomachs. I just, what uh. a thing to air on national television mm -hmm. is just, <laughs> the unraveling of your body yes um yes for such a young man okay i i'm sure carson will have no trouble getting his first girlfriend after this show okay uh, <laughs> um let's see what what else uh despite all the throwing know? up i don't think this young man is scarred forever no I, I you think that people will not want to date carson because he got sick on tv no i think I think I think Carson is a very I, I can't believe how much he both I mean I feel like watching it he feels little brotherish like I'm just like he like bulked up and like mm -hmm. did this whole thing yeah our, our little baby's growing up <laughs> yeah Carson is as old as my relationship Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the, uh, the, the day that Christy got voted out on the Amazon and then also Nicole became my girlfriend. Also Carson was born. That is. I don't know what Carson's birthday is. About. Happy birthday to Carson. Wherever, Happy whenever birthday, it is. birthday Carson. Um, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, what else? Um, how about. 
let's see people um trying to see what other things uh did we not discuss uh we got so many questions do you get um, a voicemail from keelan my friend oh who yes, i went yes. to taylor swift with said yes, she well, sent we, one we in. i don't yes, know what it is well she wants to talk about the taylor swift uh okay, experience great. uh here's keelan Hey, Rob, this is Keelan. Just wanted to thank you so much for being the matchmaker for Hannah and I to be able to get together and go to the Taylor Swift concert. It was the perfect night. We had such a great time. She's a wonderful person and she's so sweet and she's going to help me out with my casting video. So I'm so, so, so thankful. And Hannah, speaking of matchmaking, just wanted to let you know that Ben and I got engaged this weekend. So that's super fun. Anyways, thanks again. My only hot take about Survivor this season. Have we talked about how Carson looks like Harry Potter? If we have, sorry for repeating it. Anyways, thanks. Okay. Does does Carson look like Harry Potter to you? First of all, congratulations, Keelan, on your engagement. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> um, that was really, More really love. sweet. Yeah, we had a great time, like I've talked about at the Taylor Swift concert. Does Carson look like Harry Potter? Mm. Does I think he? People, I think people have said that. Can you pull up now? I feel that he well, doesn't. You want, you want you want a picture of Carson, or you want a, you you want Harry Potter? Now I want both, but probably okay. Carson. I mean, Carson could play a Hogwarts student yeah. even at twenty. Yeah, so he's actually um, we we got his birthday. Carson's oh. birthday is actually December tenth, uh, two thousand one. So. He is actually older than my relationship. Wow. So Carson was, was, but Carson was not talking or walking when your relationship started. I mean, he probably was, was walking and, and he's a, you know, very smart uh, young man. I imagine he was probably saying some words. <laughs> um, let's see. So this is Carson. Does he look like Harry Potter? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got, I mean, he's got glasses yeah. and he's not yeah. tall as we've discussed yeah, I, probably I think too that, much of an extent. Right. I, I think I was uh, getting voted out of Survivor the Amazon on Carson's first birthday. Oh my goodness. Listen, I'm really impressed by Carson. All of my perception comments, I don't want people to think it's me knocking Carson. I definitely think that Carson has been doing a really impressive thing, which is his social integration, his kind of dimming his threat level um and he's like what he's like a nasa he can't be a nasa scientist he's 20 how I think he's in some sort of a program training okay program. he's in a program he'll be in space by rob's next by rob's 40th anniversary by yeah my day and yeah don't get a twist it's not my wedding anniversary today oh yes it's your girlfriend anniversary mm -hmm. uh, yeah rio Texera says from the chat that the first Harry Potter movie is also from 2001. Oh, so gosh. yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So Carson, wow. Carson wasn't born when Harry Potter came out. Mm hmm. Rob, is this where we just, I lament about our mortality for like mm -hmm. 20 minutes? Yeah, go for it. Do you want to talk about that? Well, I want to talk about my own mortality and. It's weird. It's weird. Like everyone's like, you're not cool. Cause you're not as like, you're not like as hip and young, but I yeah. was never cool. But now it's right. attributed to my age. That's right. like, that's an interesting thing. Right. Um, I also do think I age myself by talking about myself. Like I'm 85 and not 31. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's odd. The passage of time, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'll say. And then it's only an experience you can have if you get older, but you you can't. Then once you've experienced it, it's happening. Wow. Mm -hmm. I swear I did not take a special candy during my water break. This is just... you know maybe was it metaphorical from Jeff and the Survivor producers when they came up the idea for Survivors to smash the hourglass because that fundamentally. Isn't that wish fulfillment for all of us to be able to do take a hammer to the hourglass and stop time and oh, go back? Do you want to go back in time? To when? I, that's a question. Do you wish there are things in your life you could redo? Do you have deep regrets? Uh, no, not deep regrets. No. 
Do you have <laughs> some re- like if you could smash time change? The hard thing is if you if you change something, everything could be different. Yep. yep. That's what's hard to process. That's why regret is not always a useful emotion because if you could go back and change one thing, that's why Jeff is fascinated by it, right? You know, Jeff Probst would be sitting on the side being like, huh, because he doesn't age or have regrets. So it's a different thing for him. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, people uh, ask all the time, like, then do you wish that you would have won in Survivor the Amazon? I say no. It would change change everything. I wouldn't it, I wouldn't be where I am now. Yeah, that's really wouldn't have my family. That's really tricky, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. for a long time I'm like, oh, I just wish I could go back and do a few things differently and maybe sit with different and do this. And I know that like based on how who was targets, I could have arranged myself with these finalists. But the problem with regret is it's not like a one fixed thing Mm -hmm. yeah you you might not be celebrating 20 years with the love of your life had you done anything differently yeah if i won the show i'm god knows what would have happened to me you'd probably be dead probably (laughs) would be yeah to be to be that young and to be so, so uh so successful with all that money forget it what chance did i have you heard it here first. If Rob had <laughs> won his season, he'd be dead. Yeah. Um, okay. We can hear another voicemail. We don't have to get Let's into see. like, what is right. life? Okay. Someone's listening to this podcast and they're like, oh, they're talking about Harry Potter. And then it just hard, hard yeah. left turn into. Well, yeah. do we... like, I, I mean. What? Kind of. That's how death works. It's a hard left turn. Well, I was going to say like uh, I mean, for Harry Potter too, right? Uh, yeah yeah okay um we got a lot of questions about this for some reason i don't know why people felt like that you were the authority to ask uh oh, this boy. question mm. hey guys kyle here from nashville north carolina about 45 minutes east of raleigh my question do you think the loved ones visit will ever make a comeback here in the new era of the 26 day season oh. i really miss it and i wish it would come back yeah thanks what a beautiful accent oh so beautiful i unfortunately it is you know with the way you know we're still in a pandemic and with the way quarantining works they'd essentially have to quarantine a huge amount of Mm -hmm. family for like two weeks even just to get them to the island um And it'd have to be more than just the people left because you don't know who's going to be left. Um, Because you also don't really... um, You you don't want someone accidentally giving the cast COVID. It's new people in the space. Oh, yeah. Why am I the love visitor expert? Um, I don't know. I like that. You had a loved one visit? I wish. I wish we could at least get like... We could do like a, a Zoom meeting with your loved ones if you win. I mean, they, you used, they had meeting. done that in the past. Yeah, or at least letters. I mean, it's, you know, Survivor's like um, like 10, like it's like five I minutes mean, now. In so Australian little... Survivor, they let people do like a FaceTime call with a loved one. Like, it's, I, um, you know, I would like and, to see and it's great. Um, ooh, Holly Adok says, Hannah, I hope you're billing him for therapy. Billing me, he should be bill. I should be getting billed. We're we're therapying each other. I'm so sorry. I do. I I wish that we could have some loved one letters or Zoom or something. It's a shorter season, so maybe it's a little less dramatic. But I love getting to meet the sort of extended family. You sort of do with these flashback pictures, but Mm -hmm. just watching people in a space where they're most comfortable, like with a loved one. It's really pretty. I wish it could come back. Great question. Okay. Here's a question from Peter. Okay. Hey, Rob and Hannah. I have a question that I've been kind of thinking about all season. If somebody were to pretend to have the knowledge as power advantage and ask somebody for their idol, would production step in 
and confirm whether or not the advantage was real? Is that something that would happen behind the scenes and we just wouldn't see it? Or could someone be a master bluffer and just steal people's advantages and nobody would stop them? Love to hear what you guys okay. think. Will we get this eventually, Hannah, where somebody lies about knowledge is power? Um, unless the person said and says, give me your idol, and they say, here is my idol, without questioning it. If someone just gives an idol, maybe. But I, I think... really don't I really don't know. If somebody just like stood up and did it at tribal council and didn't tell production they were going to do it ahead of time, I don't know if they would love it or they would be so mad. Well, if the Might contestant depend on who does it, yeah. If the contestant who has the idol says, Is this real? Production would have to confirm or deny. Would they? Would they? Then a person could just say no. It works how anything else works. If if, if you stood up, if you had this fake knowledge is pow power thing, and you said, Hannah, I have the knowledge is power. Give me your idol. And I was like, I don't believe it's real. So no. If it's real, production would force me to give it to you. So, but what if you don't ask, is this real? What if you were just like, oh, oh, I knew it. All right, here's the thing. Like, would they let, would they let it slide? Would they let it go through? Depends who does it. You're right. <laughs> I think it might be like a call on the field. It is a play time, a game time decision. Game time decision. I don't know. <laughs> like, um, who, yeah. Maybe one day, maybe one day we'll find out. I don't know. It'd be interesting. Oh, someone, Lexa Power says they broke the fourth wall already this season. The opening to this season was probably my favorite opening to any season. With Carolyn. Yeah. The producer telling her to like calm down and give a confessional. Like yeah. it's, that's what I remember as the start of Survivor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's that, a yeah. Where you, you like that they do this. Should they do more stuff like that? I mean, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. As yeah. someone who's been out there and we know that there's a producer, I think breaking the fourth wall in choice special moments, yes. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. across the board. You want to get wrapped up in the story. Yeah. I when we talk about breaking the fourth wall, like I, I do feel like that that's a little bit of like sort of like they pulled back the curtain a little bit. Like, I don't know if it's necessarily like breaking the, the fourth wall. Cause they're not talking to us at home. I don't know if like, okay, if that's, that's considered, uh, but I, I watched some of the, like the 41 and 42 scenes the other day, as I was going through like the different like rice negotiations. And it is disconcerting when Jeff is talking to us at home. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. I prefer him not, walking towards us out of a vague wood mm -hmm. i i did not yeah. like that yeah okay um <laughs> i'm still curious what the loaded question from what you're gaining from his podcast is though is there anything you can spill oh i i mean not, you asked if there was anything from the podcast that was relevant to this conversation and you said that's loaded what's loaded <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay too much pressure yeah all right, all right. hannah what else yeah. from survivor 44 did you want to talk about I keep looking at my board. Look at, now. look at the whiteboard. Look at my whiteboard. Um, gosh, what else from Survivor 44? I mean, I'm just, I don't. I, I really feel like this is just such a season of how people are being perceived. It always is. Yeah. But the fact that Tika has been able to gain so much steam. It's just all like about Danny. perception. What? Yeah. Like, like Danny's Danny. fart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very steamy. Uh, Very... And this is a good season, you would say, right? Ye yes. Yeah, I, what like, did Matt I don't say? know. What did your boyfriend say? Should I go get him? Do you want me to ask him what he thinks? You could ask him. Do Is that okay? Okay. Or do you want is, me to not? Is he nearby? He's in the other room. Okay. I can ask him what he thinks if, if you're okay. curious, if people sure. have made it. You go, go get go get mad and I'll and I'll plug what else is coming up here on the podcast. Okay. okay. Uh you know, we have a lot for you to check out. I just posted uh, the finale of our coverage of jury duty on hit or quit as Jenny Autumn and I. So much talk about jury duty that I really was uh pretty surprised that uh we got a lot of like tweet responses from people. 
who were uh, following along. We did two episodes over on Hit or Quit of uh, Jury Duty, so uh, be sure to check that out. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Robin and Keevan need a podcast from uh, this weekend. Yes, is he here? He is, but he got a little shy about his, how many thoughts he might have for it. Okay, which is which is fair. So he um, he, he declined. He, I was like, "Do you want to share your thoughts?" And he said that no. he was like, he was like, "I don't know really what I would would say okay. about the the forty four season." Um, what what were you updating? Any exciting? I was just saying, uh, what's what's coming up uh, this past weekend? And of course, check out my burning question talking about the lost art of the rice negotiation. I am I am curious to hear about the history of this. Do you like the rice negotiation? You no, asked me. not really. I, I think it's a little tired. You know, I just feel like just give the people rice. Who? What are we doing this for? How many because fights were there about 26. rice, Hannah? T tell me how many how many times did you and your fellow survivors fight about the rice in thirty nine days? I mean. <laughs> There was this idea that some people should be eating more rice than others, and um, all they do is fight over the rice. Why are we why are we taking this out of the show? It's a real social. Like I remember, certain people would serve the rice. I remember Dave and I got to significantly less rice. It's it's a real dynamic. But they're doing it because it's twenty six days, and they want to prove how hard it is. To who? Who cares? Did your boyfriend I, be like, oh, whoa, 26 days, no food? Oh, my God. Do you think they should go back to 39 days? Look, I I understand the reasons. Like, the 39 days to 26 days, like, there are reasons why they needed to do that that are part of the show. Like, that to me, that, that stuff doesn't bother me. It's like, okay, look, we had, like, real-world reasons why we needed to do this. And, you know, if they... I, I really, I think that they should probably try to come up with a way to get it to 30. I think that, that everybody would be happy. It's more. They don't have to, They still save, like, a week of uh, production time. So I think they should try to get it up a little bit uh, if they can. But there were real reasons why they had to do it. So uh, some of this other stuff about like, oh, you got to earn, you got to do this, uh, shot in the dark, the three tribes. Like, like It's just like that, you know, they're just like doing stuff for, you know, they have some idea that's a creative uh, that they're doing for like that they don't have to do. Yeah. I mean, will you ask me if I liked the season? Yeah. And I feel like I hesitated. I really like the cast. I think that there's a lot of potential winners. I think that there's a lot of like four flawed. Stars. What? So many four. stars. Yeah. It's four four, stars. But four star uh, whiteboard. It's a four star whiteboard, everybody. And I want to be very clear. Someone without a star might win. I was completely blindsided by the Gabler season. win. Yeah. Gabler. Um, Happened in season 41. I, yeah, it, this, this stuff can happen. Um, I just think that like the cast and the storytelling and the dynamics, Carolyn and Jam Jam's weird, funky marriage, um, you know, Carson's transformation to get on the show, Franny and then Franny and Matt and like, you know, the sort of quote unquote villains. Like I thought Josh was a pretty like interesting quote unquote villain. Like there was a lot to like in the season. I just, um, I think it's sometimes the more interesting storyline is bypassed by um, kind of too many devices. Yeah. Which I think everyone's been saying, right? I mean, I don't, or That's maybe been... not everyone. Not well, I mean, not the people that work on Survivor. Um, but and you know. I think the people that work on Survivor are great storytellers. And so I think it's just there's they don't just need a it. lot they of, don't need it. They, there's a lot of you know. toys on the table. And it, and so it it's hard to um compare it to sort of a longer season where you're getting more character moments. Yeah. Um, but all in all, like um, you know. Not perfect, but, you know, I think it's been a, f a fun ride so far. 
Yeah, I think it's fun. I genuinely don't know exactly how it's going to shake out. Um, I know that this, this audience feels, I can feel the passion on Twitter. Um, So I'm curious. I hope everyone gets the ending that they feel satisfied by. I hope so. Okay. Um, Anna, what's coming up for you? What is coming up? So many weddings. I'm at the age. Everyone's getting married. Everyone I know is getting married. I've got a wedding. Your cast of all the engaged people? Um, Yes, I will be attending Zeke's wedding in September. Okay. I'm tremendously looking forward to that. Um, It'll be, I know I'm not going to say the location. (laughs) Here's where you go. Here's where you go to crash Zeke's wedding. Yeah. Um, I'll give you the hotel, everything that you need yeah. to find it. Um, I'm excited for Adam Klein's wedding as well. I, I don't know if that'll be uh, this year or the beginning or, yeah. or next, but right, we're um, talking to him soon. C- please congratulate him on his uh, fantastic engagement. Um, and then some non Island weddings as well. Uh, wow. But, uh, yeah, doing, doing like writing and comedy stuff, but everyone's probably aware that there's some, uh, potential writer strikes and things of that nature. So, um, your favorite TV show might be paused. Um, not survivor, not survivor. Um, Unless you think Survivor is scripted, then that might be paused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um, we'll find out the truth, right? Because if the writers go on strike and Survivor stops. Yes, anyone who thinks Survivor is scripted in your life, if you're listening mm -hmm. and someone you know says it's all scripted, when it keeps going, if there's a writer's strike, you'll know that's not true. Yeah. Do you think that if there's a writer's strike that maybe then this could be the time where, okay, oh, this is the season. Let's get... Let's get Cochran and Mike White and David Wright and, you know, a Rafe and like a, a bunch of like the survivor writers back on the island because they're striking. This is the time to do it. This is yeah. the time to target. And that's not breaking the like the strike, right? No, but going on a reality show is not breaking that's not the crossing strike. Line. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I have. Uh, things that I want our Happer's eyes on, I will send them to you, Rob, and maybe people can support my off-island projects that are in progress right now, and that would be great. We can cut out the middleman. Just tell people where to follow you. Oh, yeah. Follow me uh, on all the places you follow people on. It's at Hannah Lil Nesson Mm -hmm. on Instagram, TikTok, Yep. Elon Musk's Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, gosh, is there another social media platform? Oh, Adam Klein's on the recap this week. Wow. You guys yes. are lucky. It's, We're a, it's lucky. a double millennial Gen X week. What a week. Um, uh, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's see how my predictions do. If they're completely wrong right away <laughs> or if well, they are right. Look, that's part of the fun. Otherwise, you're spoiled. No, I love, I <laughs> love, yeah, I'm not spoiled, which has made, been made clear. Sometimes I feel like I'm so on point, and other times Gabler wins, and I never I, discussed During him. season 41, you felt like it was it was a done deal. Shan was winning the season. You know, I've had some off times. <laughs> yeah. I would like to point out I've had obvious, plenty of obvious on Obvious winner time. edit. She's the winner. I really believed in Shan. Listen, I really believed in Jesse. I yeah. um, I I didn't see Gabler hiding in plain sight. Nobody did. Um. Yeah. All right. So I will see. You know, anyone on my whiteboard could win, star or no star. Well, Hannah, it's a gamble. Thank, thank you, you for, for having com- me on. Thank you for coming back. Will you come back for season number twelve for Survivor Forty Five? Oh my gosh. 45. Unless you're on it. Yes. No. Oh, uh, I believe they're currently shooting. <laughs> okay. This would be, <laughs> this would be quite the twist. Did, was this pre-taped? Was this pre Oh, wow. Wow. What if mm-hmm. this was all of, yeah. Are, was- are you chat GPT? 
I am just like a pixelated chat GPT, Hannah. <laughs> I'm actually currently right now winning Survivor Season 45. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> No, of course. I'll come back. Thank you for everyone who's listened to how many how many hours are we in now? About two hour forty ish minutes. If you've listened for this full two hour forty ish minutes, thank you for sticking with it. Yep. I hope uh, you. your house is fully clean now. Like if you've been cleaning <laughs> and listening. Yeah. All right, so everybody. Even All if right. your house is dirty, thank you so much for joining us. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.